come on in the intro good evening uh welcome to the december 4th meeting of the hockey to planning board uh first thing on the agenda is the continued public hearing whisper ridge open space landscape preservation development so if you want to come up and give us an update on uh what has happened since our last meeting well we had the site walk and um Everybody good. Everybody good look at it. And, uh, it's different from what you submitted before. They should all have copies. Not color copies. Not color copies. <laughs> oh. 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 See, now, now you're great. Now that's Picking at our graces. <laughs> so what we're thinking of doing is, is uh, Joe had was going to run through the conventional Without further ado, uh, George Nico, Gilead and Talonon, uh, for the record. And as Don pointed out, uh, Elizabeth Manini is here to uh, present the uh, uh, open space and here to present the uh, <coughs> conventional subdivision. Uh, on this here and just to some. Uh, a number of changes uh, were done since uh, the last meeting response to Baker's comments and to the board's comments. And um, we added, notably added two lots uh, to the subdivision. So it is a 24 uh, lot subdivision. Uh, we did profiles for <coughs> the entire length of the road. Um, did some uh, other minor changes. Uh, we did the walk with you and uh, <coughs> uh, responded to all the comments from Peter's letter. So if you have any questions, this would be good time. Mr. Well, so Durso is our project liaison, so continue. Okay, thank you. <coughs> a little bit of a call, so bear with me. Uh, so that's a review of the changes and updates we have in our packets, uh, feedback from uh, Beta, and uh, I'm glad to see that there has been uh, positive responses. There is a newer packet from Beta that came today that I, I haven't had a chance to uh, read all the way through yet. Um, just a, a purview of the board, is that everyone read the Phil's latest uh, response to their responses? Mm -hmm. okay. um, we can have maybe Phil go through that uh, a little bit shortly. Uh, from our outline, <coughs> where we left off before uh, was actually the, the consultant re review, which is uh, Phil's role. And since then, uh, as John's pointed out, there's been uh, some responses and, and changes and fixes and corrections uh, that are now in front of us. Uh, and also in our, some of that is in our packets, but we don't have the <laughs> color versions. Uh, so thank you for the color versions. It's, it makes uh, things more clearer that way. Uh, we uh, had the sidewalk. I'm sorry I was not able to be there, but I, uh, I think, uh, would the board like to make any comments based on what they've seen on the site walk? Um, <coughs> anyone eager to, Amy? Um, I guess I could say we noticed there were any, not any stone walls or anything. Um, let's see. But there are stone walls. I don't, mm -mm. we didn't observe any. Uh, between the uh, first house on the left that's currently there and the bottom of the slope, there's a, uh, a farmer's wall that goes along uh, like the middle of it. There's not going to be any construction from this area of the project, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that is a stone wall, yes? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think maybe you're right. I we think were, Frank's right. Yeah, yeah, we were out there. Yeah, I think there is one okay. to the left of the first house. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think now that you mentioned it, yeah. I think it's the only one in the whole place. Because right. we, we didn't make an observation to that, that there was no stone wall throughout the 
you were, you're further on up and in. Yeah, what an area, okay. yeah. Um, again, again, sorry, I wasn't there. That's <laughs> okay, no. Uh, and I just wanted to say too, it looks, this is a 24 home subdivision now, but for people at home, that's because two of the existing homes would be replaced by two new homes. It's not, it's yeah. not really an addition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, that, and they're going to be t torn down, <coughs> demolished, and then rebuilt? Um, not 100% sure on that yet. Um, don't know. Possible. Because our literature, yeah, because our literature tells us that they, you have intention of, yeah. There was intention of tearing them down. Yeah. Well, probably. probably. Okay. These four houses on the on the property, and uh, one of them will be demolished because this is where the road will uh, go through. Okay. And those two are the ones that Ron is uh, discussing whether he wants to demolish them or not. And there's another existing house that uh, will remain. Which was the house that's highest up and the newest, the newest yeah. house. Okay. Um, on our outline, we have uh, other town department comments. Uh, do we have anything new, Jennifer? From um, not specifically, other than that, I believe the fire chief has looked at the most recent plan and is satisfied with what he's seen. But there's nothing in writing. I just him on the phone. And we're looking for a particularly. Um, his feedback on the incline and what? Uh, um, he mostly commented to me on the fact that now that it's not a cul-de-sac, he's happy that there's two means of egress and that it's a 20-foot wide roadway. Thank you. Since we're maintaining uh, the whole road is under 9 percent, so it should be immediately accessible. Okay, um, so check. Uh, is there anything else we would like to add to the outline as a planning board? And just have one general question. Um, so I see that you're going to have a, uh, a common septic system. Yes, correct. Um, are the existing houses going to be connected to that, or are they going to maintain their own? The, the one on top of the hill will remain as is. The other two, depending on whether they will be demolished or not, uh, we will uh, decide whether we will have septic systems in place since they already have septic systems now mm -hmm. so we can assume that the conditions are favorable mm -hmm. we can uh, do, we can have them being on their own septic system the rest of the logs will be with the common system okay is there any members of the com of the public that would like to comment on our outline And a quick question, the, the two or three homes that may be removed, uh, the people that live there know, they're, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at Dan. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Would you like to know? <laughs> the, the family and everyone's aware of all the planning that's going on. Yes, uh, <coughs> the, the land is primarily Yes, Jane. Um, Can we have him come, come to the mic, please? Yeah, unfortunately. Well, welcome back, Colby. We missed you last time. Uh, <laughs> and just for reference, that was Dan McIntyre, and this is Jane Moran from I had a chance to East, Main East Main Street. Seventy East Main Street, Jane Moran, um, and chair of the Upper Charles Trail. Just um, curious if uh, there are trails on the property, and if you have any plans to preserve them or connect them, mm -hmm. connect with other trails. Yes, this, uh, the hearing now is mainly so we can uh, get a permit to build 24 uh, houses. Uh, so the, we're hoping the yield plan to be approved. And later on, the open space layout will actually have improved trails and will connect. We are going to uh, connect existing trails and Assure contiguous open space so people can enjoy it. If, if I may, Jane, if you stay in there for a second, uh, we could add trails as another 
component of the outline, or if you can briefly show her uh, where it does connect to uh, trail parking and how they're going to expand that, if you could just briefly well, give her an overview. Thank people's time tonight. I want you to add it to the outline and we can talk about it later as we go through. Okay, well, because we, we already covered it last week, is, is uh, but we can add it to the outline specifically and go into more depth. So we'll add it to the outline. But, but briefly, there's an existing six six lot uh, parking uh, for enjoyment of open space, and we are going to maintain this one. So that's the one that's there already? It is there already, and the trail will connect to the okay. existing trail. Thank you. Yeah. So Jennifer, under G, will that in trail discussion? Thank you. Okay, so item eight is detailed discussion, uh, conservation commission filing. Uh, just, before we do want to fill review these comments before we get mm -hmm. the detailed discussion, and that, that okay. would help with the detailed discussion. It would, thank you. Uh, Phil Paradis, if you're prepared to discuss uh, everything, but particularly the document you sent today. Okay. <coughs> so the project, um, Phil, uh, for the record, Phil Paradis was paid for the project, uh, I think he's gotten about halfway through your, through your yeah. presentation, so I don't know if you want to hear the other changes, or it's up to you. But anyway, for the, for the yield plan, um, <coughs> they have taken out a road um, and um, and the cold side. Yes, and we, we removed the uh, bare part, which was um, a cut through, basically, and then we also removed the uh, cold side. And they provided uh, um, preliminary uh, profile of the road, and uh, <coughs> it's a very uh, hilly site. So about <laughs> half of the 1,500 uh, 5,100 feet of roadway is going to be at 9% slope, which is fairly significant. Uh, so, and again, I, I, I think it's going to be a challenge to, to grade a lot of these lots. A lot of the lots are shown um, on, on steeper slopes and stuff like that. So I, 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 I bet there's going to be a lot of work for it. For for instance, I tried to figure out how much the existing house, if that existing house's driveway would be affected. And based on the profiles, the roadway is going to be eight feet lower at the base of that, um, that driveway. So it's, it's a fairly significant challenge. Um, however, uh, from a from purely, purely mathematical basis, they, they can have. 24 lots. I don't know if you want to comment on the open space plan as well. Uh, yes, please. Okay. So, um, the open space plan has been modified as well. Sorry, can we put that one up, please? The open space. That's the green Oh, it's the one on the left. Okay, thank you. The more colorful color. Yes. You have a call too. No. Yes. <laughs> Generally, the uh, open space plan. Uh, uh, one of the first one of the first things we noticed was that the this application uh, added the two lots that are interior to the to the development site. And they added up to like <coughs> about three acres, a little more than three acres yet. Yeah. So the project limits went up from 37 to 39 to 47. So I don't know if it was, I don't know if you fixed the math or something like that. I, I fixed the math. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but on your new plan, excuse me, I apologize. For your, on, for the chair. Sure. On, on your plan, it still says 47.2. Yeah, that's, that's the new one. Yeah, that's the, that's the. the, the <coughs> okay. So, uh, and then um, 
There was a one issue with the, the, the open space plan shows a little, a little lot off the highway here. I don't know if that's part of the subdivision. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's all, uh, that lot's all in the same family, or we assume it is, so um, we may be able to get a hold of it for next to nothing or um, but at any rate it's kind of up by itself and yeah it's, it's small and it's not it's a and, um, it's landlocked um, it is a remainder from when form x5 was built and the right of way was purchased by the city this is a little triangle without access okay i'll work on that see if we can it's just an odd situation to that you up. require a, a hundred foot buffer around that. Uh -huh. So we we'll kick into the lot 14. And, and that lot also, I mean, obviously it also exists on the conventional plan, but can you, can you point out on the conventional plan where it exists? Because it looks like a straight line along 495. And on the open space plan, it's kind of tucked in more. And it's right there, yeah. <coughs> okay. So for, yeah, uh, we can double check and make sure that the those layout stays out of that. Assuming we can't pick up the piece of uh, the parcel, um, even if we if we couldn't in the open space, um, I think it's a reasonable place for us to request uh, a waiver and reduction of the. Uh, 100 foot buffer, considering it's the 100 foot buffer to 495. Not, nobody on 495 is going to be complaining that there's missing 100 foot buffer, especially where it's a landlocked piece. Right. Well, I see they're discussing something right now, but uh, maybe the family has been paying taxes for <coughs> over 50 years on it. So. And, that's a, and it's very possible that that's something that as they've gone with the, and this is, I believe, part of the reason that the acreage changed is as they, um, have nailed down the property lines. They're finalizing who owns what exactly, where the property lines are, and that's how the, that's how the map ended up a little bit different than the last time we saw it. It's interesting how the history of, of the town is all uh, entwined in, in this. Yes. And so uh, that we'll keep that an open issue and hope that can be resolved. Um, looks like you guys are making some progress even right now. Uh, so thank you for pointing that out, Phil. It's something that uh, doesn't often pop up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and also the, the open space uh, profiles weren't provided, so we have even less information of how we're going to break that. Meaning it's more still more of an idea than a plan? Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they, uh, I, I think, I, depending on how this, how they grade it out, I don't. They may not get as much green area. They may have to do more massive earthwork. Um, uh, and you know, although they didn't provide a, a formal stormwater stormwater uh, uh, design for this, they only have two small basins for the for the stormwater management. I think that may be a little tight. It's, it's fairly common to not, typically we wouldn't be doing, uh, as part of the preliminary process, we wouldn't be doing a uh, full storm wire analysis. Um, certainly, especially, uh, we were, we're allowed to use a certain amount of the open space for the detention areas anyway, but also we have almost 10% more open space than is required. So. Um, between those two, I'm very confident that if we need larger stormwater areas, we can, we can fairly easily provide them. Through the chair? Sure. Are, are there any plans for retention ponds? The, uh, yes. There, two, but. Yeah, there's two proposed right now. Can you point them out, please? There's one here. Okay. Another here. I actually thought there were a total of four, but those were two. Maybe it was only here. I saw four. Yeah, there were four. 
four in the uh, <clears throat> And then not all shown yet in the. There, yeah, those are the two areas that, you know, and it's a lot less roadway uh, in the, in the, in the uh, open space, so uh, we expect there to be less, but again, with plenty of room. Um, and as we move further down the process, we'll get an idea of exactly what we need for, for storage and um, provide additional areas or enlarge those areas as needed. I just want to note that the uh, allowance of the uh, open space for stormwater is at the discretion of the planning board. It's a waiver by the planning board. It's not a by right use. Can I ask a question? Oh. Yeah. Um, Dave. Just to comment on that, there was a note from the the health agency saying that they don't support the retention ponds. That's when they okay. thought there was two or when there's four. It just says in general they, they uh, should be, says recharge ponds and basins should be minimized to reduce standing water and potential insect breeding areas. The health department does not support open basins for recharge for this reason. So just, we have some Ariel and then I have a question as well. Sure, thank you. Muriel? Um, I think uh, there was another question <clears throat> about the uh, the communal septic or wastewater system being on the open space? Is there? We actually, it's, and that was one of our <coughs> comments in beta, um, also said we could address it by, we pulled the, the septic system is now shown uh, okay. outside of the open space. Perfect, yeah. thank you. Okay. So, Bill, just to follow up on your comment, you thought you said it's going to be pretty tight. Um, does that mean it complies today, or are you going to look for more analysis as they get farther down the? Well, uh, it, it's hard to see until you go and actually design it. Uh, I just know from experience that they've got, uh, they, and the, the profile on the uh, yield plan has many ups and downs. Conventional uh, plan, when you say yield plan, yeah. conventional plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the purpose of the conventional plan is to create the yield. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the, in, it needs to be buildable, and that's and we're, mm -hmm. that's why we do the profiles and to make sure we can meet all, and make sure it's a buildable plan. But when it comes down to it, we're not going, we don't want to plan, we do not want to build the conventional. So yes, it's tight, but it's buildable, and we're not really gonna have to worry about trying to, you know, tweak all those little, Tight pieces because that's not what we want to build anyway. Uh, and as I think everybody um, agreed when we were out on the site, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful site that with a lot of open space that we'd like to preserve. And I think the I think the board is pretty much on on board with that. Um, so the it's it's we believe it's buildable based on you know our original design, and then we've made some additional. Um, investigation to make sure that it is buildable. Um, so our primary goal tonight would be to to see if the board is in agreement that the 24 lots with the current <coughs> setup um, in the yield plan works and, is a, and agrees that that's buildable. And then once we know that, we can move forward with the open space uh, and get more thorough with our design. Okay. Um, just so I can understand the topography, am I to understand that the where the, the leach field is, that's up on top of the hill? Correct. Yes. Okay. And I guess, Phil, is it a good idea to have a, de a detention pond <coughs> in, uh, below a leaching area? Um, we, don't, we don't have a detention basin for the leaching area. <coughs> no. But but the leach area is, it, it's not on the top of the hill, it's, it's on the slope. So it's, but it's all, it, the numbers all work for that. It's on the, uh, if you're, uh, so the way the septic systems are designed to work is that there's a fair amount of treatment that happens before it even gets to the, the septic mm -hmm. system itself. And as it infiltrates, we have to, you know, there's setbacks that we have to meet to mm -hmm. things like um, wetlands and um, open water detention area, any, all that stuff. So um, it, even if it's up gradient of it, it, there's no detention basin like directly next to it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a, a package treatment plant then? 
because you're about at 10,000 gallons per day, aren't you? We're, that the intention is to stay less than 10,000 so that we do not have to, uh, so that we're not reaching that threshold. So mm -hmm. this is not proposed to be a... a uh, so how do you manage to reach that if it's, if you can't get that under the 10,000? Uh, we, we can, <laughs> there's, there's different things that we can do. We, uh, you, if you reach the 10,000, you have to do a package plan. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, we could eliminate a lot if it was the, you know, that's part of how, it's part of why we wanted to go with this type of system is because if we were, if we were going to be over the 10,000, then it might make sense for us to go to the individual, you know, the, right now our intention, one of our constraints is to keep that under 10,000 so that we're sticking with the shared system and we're not reaching that threshold for the 10,000. Okay, so to follow up on that question, then the two houses that you plan to either demolish or keep, and if if my calculation is correct, then you would not change the septic systems that are already in place for those two. That's a, that's a possibility, absolutely. Okay. The other thing is, you know, eliminating, a bed, you know, making something a three bedroom instead of a four bedroom can possibly make the difference. You know, take two of the houses and make them three bedrooms instead of four bedrooms, we stay under the tent. So there's, there's, Plenty of ways for us to um, work with these lots and, and and stay under the ten thousand. I see. Okay. Thank you. Just one follow up. Sure, David. Don't have a question. The, the location of that. I guess I wasn't quite clear when I said yes. It's at the top of the hill. Yes. As you go away from the road to the bottom left, everything rises. Mm -hmm. But that drain, that um, septic area is lower than the rest of the top. I don't know if I'm describing it accurately. It's kind of on a slope. Right, there's more up, this is all uphill. Right. This whole area is uphill of the, the system. Okay. You know, the, the contour runs generally like kind of in here. So this is all uphill. And just one last follow up on it. What kind of advanced treatment are you providing if you're not putting in a treatment plan, a package treatment plan? It, there, it's, it, we're going to meet as we will have to. Um, we'll go through what is required for the um, for it's, it's basically the same. So it's just a large shuttle five. Is what you're going to go for? It's yes. Okay. Where it, it absolutely it still falls, and even even if it's over the ten thousand, it still falls in Title Five until you get to another threshold. Right. But um, but yes, it's just. It, you're taking all of the individual systems and moving them basically to one spot. Right. There's there's no, um, I guess there's no significant treatment difference. So earlier Phil mentioned um, that there's an eight foot difference in how the road will be with the <laughs> house that's highest up that's staying. Uh, is that the same for both plans? I, I know the open space plan is still uh, yeah. idea stage, but uh, I would say that it's it is pretty close, but we we'll run the profile for uh, the conventional subdivision since this is the one that we already have uh, an alignment which is uh, pretty much clear, and uh, the other one will still receive your comments and no changes. So. Could you show us perhaps, um, might there be an alternative driveway situation? Or I'm not, uh, my experience is that the house I bought, they raised the road and everything had a change in front uh, before I bought it. Uh, so I'm, that was like two or three feet. This is eight feet, I'm not sure how, it's, how that can be handled other than uh, you know adding an elevator in or, uh, I'll make a joke. It's a long, I mean it's a fairly long driveway. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what the slope is exactly on it. It's pretty but steep. We can, um, but we can definitely, you know, because we can add um, possibly regraining it. 
grading in the driveway mm -hmm. uh, very often on steep lots. You know, it's a new steep lot. You can start on one side and kind of transverse across. Um, so there's there's definitely things that we can do to, to minimize the slope on the driveway. Um, plus, if, if it becomes a severe issue, we can always look at um, moving this uh, the roadway some more. Now, uh, each of the houses will have their own wells, or is it town water, but not town sewer? I forget. It's uh, town water. Town water. The, it'll be they're gonna we're gonna extend. The, there is water out on Wood Street, and we'll be running through. And the, the existing homes will be switching over to it, or, or have the option to. I believe, yeah. I believe they will have the option. They must have pretty deep wells. So the, the, driver, uh, the driveways will comply with, with the fire chief's um, guidelines on those. Thank you. And, uh, and with the open space plan, we have uh, more plus, we have a little more flexibility to move the, the alignment of the roadway to, uh, to avoid in particular that eight foot um, area that the uh, fill Thank you. Thank you. Through the chair. Sure. Um, I got a couple questions that I'm looking at. The, on the conventional plan first off, and then we'll go to the open space. On the conventional, you have running from Wood Street, I believe. Uh, no, not from 495. There's a, there's a linear line there that is all over the place, and it looks like it has the letter B in it, or the number, the letter B. Yeah, that's the buffer, probably. Is it the letter? You mean the buffer? Yeah, yeah. What, yep. what is that? Hap what's happening with that, and, and why do you have it highlighted on your color aspect? That's just a hundred foot, it's a hundred foot, right? Yeah. Hundred foot buffer to the to the wetland. Uh, it's just a. It's really less to do with you guys and more to do with um, con -com. It's, Yeah, conservation is something that we keep track of. Okay, so on lot twenty three and twenty four, okay, that buffer zone sits right through the house that you have intended on <coughs> on that lot on twenty three. Yep. Um, and on your color depiction, lots 23 and 24 do not have any coloring of the house. And is there a reason for that? We were not sure whether they are going to be removed or not. I see. So if, if so these, those these are the existing, those are the existing, right. on here, uncolored, on the colored. Three and four, not 23. Right. It's what is it? It's lot three and lot four, not twenty three and twenty four. No, it shows no, twenty three, twenty four on the conventional. Yeah, oh, I'm looking at the open space. I'm yeah. So, to that point, then, um, the other question that I that I had was, um, if that is a hundred foot buffer, then on lot twenty three, do you have an intention? Does it's, it's pre-existing? It's pre-existing. So yeah, the pre-existing is just grandfather in, and the new house just have to be set up <coughs> laid outside of the setback, and you know we have to make sure that it is outside of the buffer. Okay. But this is not the jurisdiction of Hong Kong. And Sure. Will come up. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll be waiting for it. Yes, I know. I understand. Thank you. Um, this, might be a, this might be a good point to uh, segue on to uh, item A under eight, Conservation Commission filing. Uh, what we, uh, what input uh, we need to give to the CONCOM and what uh, kind of uh, questions we want to ask them or have anything that we maybe want them to consider that or what answers we need from them. Uh, so can I ask a question? Sure. Um, kind of a point of order kind of thing here. So the the applicants were hoping that we could get down to 8CA2, well, the planning board of number of lots today, so that then they, I assume, so that you can have a more detailed plan for the storm drainage and stuff like that. Do we need 8A to come back from them to CONCOM before we can do that? I, I kind of lean that way uh, because I'd like to have an answer <coughs> on what the CONCOM thinks about uh, the Board of Health suggestion about the retention ponds, and I would like to have uh, their feedback on the buffers and 
So is there a meeting scheduled with them two days? We haven't yet. Uh, we're in the pro I think they finished um, flagging. So the, the property's all flagged and uh, it's ready. It's going to be located uh, either, maybe even this week, uh, all the property will be located beyond plan and then we'll file the compound as soon as we possibly can. And we'll be, f so I think we're, I think we're going to file um, an ANRAD first just to get their agreement on where the line is. Um, and then once that we go through that process, then we would be showing them um, the plan and, and where we propose to uh, be within the 100 foot buffer and uh, <clears throat> where we would be addressing um, widening of the two existing wetland crossings. And, and just for context on that, the, the 100 foot buffer that you have there is uh, from historical data from a while back. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Based on what the, the flagging that they've done, we don't ex anticipate it's going to change in any way that's going to affect the plan that you have, you know, but obviously we need to update it with the, the most current information to move forward. Right. Is that the reflagging, is that a part of the, the um, redelineation that the beta group suggested would be helpful? Is that what, what we're trying yes. to do? It's a, yes. So it's a, so who who started the CONCOM will come in and, and the Conservation Commission will review the wetland flagging uh, and agree know, agree to your delineation. And then they'll either agree or they'll make modifications okay. to the, the uh, delineation. So Frank, can I say so. Um, I mean, to me, it seems that the open space plan is more, much more favorable. But are you concerned that the lot, number of lots will change after they go to comp? Possibly. Okay. So what we're looking for more from you guys is to uh, um, to get and you're concerned it's going to change the number of lots on on. So all we want to bring to conservation is the open space plan. Um, there's, there's no, um, I guess, I, I guess I don't, don't quite understand, um, how, how you think that the number of lots might change based on the, the wetlands. I don't know that I think that, but I thought that would be what Frank. Well, it's, it's a concern when you're talking about, you know, 10,000 gallons uh, for the wastewater treatment, and you may like remove bedrooms, and, and, and I'm, I'm sure that can all be done. But, um, but until we see, well, can we excuse me, can we address that under the open space plan when that right. comes up? Yes, the, the open space plan definitely will come <laughs> in front of you and will go in front of control. Uh, oh. The com Conventional subdivision plan we're presenting is uh, simply a way to prove that the subdivision is buildable, which we but believe it is, and to uh, set the number of lots. And then once we go into definitive subdivision, you will definitely we will definitely discuss every single lot and yeah. the way the road goes. Uh, okay. The subdivision but and the don't we don't we need input from the concom? Before we can determine whether the um, conventional plan is even feasible, yeah. So I, I know you're looking for us to. We can't circumvent. We, we, we can't. We, we need to have information about uh, whether or not the um, conventional plan is feasible first before we can agree that the open space plan is is the one that that you should go forward. Can we with. just confirm that with Jen? One of the special permit criteria that the planning board needs to find is that the parcel could be developed under as a conventional subdivision under existing local, state, and federal land use regulations, which right. would include the local Hockney Wetlands Bylaw and the Wetlands Protection Act. So that's what we need for the conventional right. plan. Right. So, so we need that first. Yep. Mm -hmm. Under, understood. Yeah. So in item 8A, that's one of our questions. Does and, I, and I think. In the past, in previous projects, the board nece didn't necessarily require a full filing with CONCOM under the conventional plan, but at least ask the developer to go informally present their plan and get something in writing from CONCOM saying something. But to David's point, aren't they going to have to do that anyways? 
uh, formally. But you say for the convention. Not for the convention of plan, because Frank. that's not something that they're looking yeah. to build. They're looking to just go to Concom mm -hmm. with the open space plan. Mm -hmm. But we need to say that the uh, that the, the commercial conventional plan, plan is buildable, process. and we can't say that right. without Concom's feedback. Because sure. we're not so, the experts. Right. So we need them to go to Concom first, like you said, and informally. Yeah. Informally, get some get some information, bring it back to us, and then we can go forward. So I I understand that. And uh, I also I'm under the impression that they won't, they're not going to do that. That they won't give us anything in writing saying you can or can't without an NOI, notice of intent, which would mean we're designing a whole subdivision soup to nuts right. in order to get that to that point. But then we so need to have that, though. Yeah, but. That doesn't sound fair, though, because when we just <laughs> well, refer to Jen, because she's the one who said it was okay I, and No, I can, I can just tell you what your, what your criteria is, no, but you said how in you get there. Is right, but you said in previous projects we did informally get something in writing from I, the Concom. I believe we did. Um, Chamberlain and Whalen, didn't we get something in writing from Concom? I mean, they also came to our meeting. Yeah, they, they came. They came and they, they had something for us. So I don't know I don't know who told you no, but um, I mean they're not going to give you a definitive yes. You can build this, but yeah, it, yeah. I, I got the information from Wales. But <laughs> <laughs> historically speaking, uh, Hunter's Ridge was yeah. similar to the open space plan here. Uh, how did that process work? I haven't been part of it. I, it's long ago, but uh, Craig might remember. Uh, <laughs> Did well, what happened, we used to have joint meetings. That helped a lot. I don't know if that's any kind of possibility. I mean, our next meeting, the ConCom does not have a meeting. We could ask them to come um, or try to do a joint meeting if they're available. Uh, it's up to the board. To the chair. Can I ask a question to <laughs> Phil? Maybe Phil can answer, put some light on that um, Chamberlain aspect in association to this aspect. Um, uh, I think it's a similar situation. Um, conservation, as was stated, conservation won't give a definitive answer without a, a formal notice of intent filing. Um, the challenge with getting them to give an opinion is they don't like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, they, the, 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 the thing that you, I, I just want to point out the fact that most of the most of the houses that are shown on the, the yield plan are outside of the buffer zone so it's outside of the jurisdiction the only things that would be uh, of issue are the crossings uh, and there's two shown here but under the open space plan then they're not even going to have those two crossings um, so I, I'm not sure that, you know, this, this house may be questionable, um, but I, you know, I, I, I don't think it's, it, it, it's like, what, 25 feet into the buffer zone. So that's, you know, that, that would be the only one I would ask about. Um, and obviously the roads, you know, you could get a, you know, this would be a, a special um, limited project under their, their regulations. So I think it's permittable. Will they get 24, 23? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll like this much better, especially if we can keep everything out of the buffer zone. All right, so thank to, you. To okay. your Chair. Point, can I ask? Oh. Come on. We might need you still up there, Phil. All right. <laughs> um, just to your point there, so if we're talking about the conventional plan in terms of um, permittability and meeting regs and so forth, and, and also using it as a yield plan, um, would we, you know, would we ask the developer to contemplate taking those four off so that that double wetland crossing isn't there? Um, it just, it's a little chicken in the egg, right? We have to have the con con, but that's that it would be permeable and feasible and that's how we're getting our numbers mm -hmm. um and then you know the open space plan which probably everybody would agree often is the one that we're more interested in seeing um does it make sense to just not contemplate those four units in the yield well, i'm sure everybody would like to do that but from our perspective that's a completely 
and, and we've had wetlands scientists look at it and make sure that that, and even in, even in my experience, um, is if you're staying under the 5,000 square feet, and which you can go over, but especially if you're staying under that, there's absolutely no reason that that's not a permittable um, project. So I don't see, I don't think we would be willing to just give up the four lots because somebody thinks that it might not be. Um, it's, this is a... So, so I guess what we're talking about though is that you have to, you have to um, convince us with some to pass some threshold <coughs> that it is permittable, but you don't want to go through the process with CONCOM. And so that, that points to an obvious question for us. So for before, me. Before I'll she answers that, me. I just want a question about the process. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Point of order. On, on. Point but, of order. I, I, but Mary Earl has, has a question and okay. she needs time to answer. Okay. Uh, make no mistake, we definitely want to go through CONCOM. I mean, we have to. But um, I, I don't want to file an NL, a notice of intent for a subdivision I'm not going to build. It would take, it would, it would drag the process up. Six and I don't think maybe a year. I don't think that's the intent. Uh, that's that's certainly not the intent that I've I've never I've never had to go to Concom for a yield plan ever. So in any town, so I, I can't imagine that the point is to go through an entire filing for an entire subdivision, go through all of the drainage design, uh, and you know there's <laughs> certainly a certain amount of proof that that. Is reasonable to expect that we can build 24 lots, um, but on top of the yield plan, you guys also have in your regulations um, a, ca a mathematical calculation for how many lots we can get in a in a subdivision, and it comes out comes out to 29 lots. Uh, and that's a pure mathematical calculation that I'm sure almost always comes out more than what we can eventually build. Eventually build, but nonetheless, that gives you, uh, you know, an idea of that it's not unreasonable to get 24 lots here, and um, we can certainly produce. Uh, you know, we had. Some of the people here at the last meeting, I can we can have um, Scott Goddard who uh, has, has looked at the wetlands and, and we can have him come and maybe give you some more information on why he thinks that this is a permittable um, project, the conventional. Um, and he's certainly more versed in all of the wetland regulations than I am. But based on <coughs> Even your uh, your peer reviews comments, you know, if it's a limited project, you can get through, you can get by the two wetland um, widenings, and you know these. Even though that those require crossing, um, they um, the houses themselves are outside of the buffer. Plus, and this again goes to a yield plan versus trying to permit the whole thing. If if we were going to do a conventional subdivision, we would only we would be looking to the board to, um, to get a uh, waiver for a cul-de-sac off the end so that we'd only be crossing once. And we can't do that as part of the yield because you're not allowed to ask for any waiver. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the process isn't meant to be a full blown one hundred percent Permit it, and then, okay, now what can you do? Well, the other, the other side of the argument, if, if I can insert my opinion so, so here. Can I, no, no, hold on. Uh, point of order is. I'll get to you. Point, point of order is a discussion, isn't it? You're not making a point of order. You, you, I am. Is it about the topic or is it about a point of order? It's about the process of what we're going through right here. Right. We're, we're, we're right now talking about working with the Conservation Commission Correct. and then how that works with in, in regards to getting us information back in it's fine in, I don't want to argue like, with you go ahead all right so Muriel's point and I think the other side of the argument is that we're ask, being asked to make a decision based on uh, a conventional scenario that does include a couple of crossings that may or may not be approved by a conservation commission that 
could affect mathematically what's in the open space plan, even though the open space plan doesn't utilize that area. So it's it's a balance, but we would need more information anyways to be able to be able to do that. Uh, Irfan had a question. Um, if, I don't know if you still have it. I'm actually, um, Mario I had what you asked right. a lot of what I was going to ask. Um, it, so I'm, I'm going right. to. Wait, wait, hold on. Then John had. Uh, yeah. What is the because I think I'm we do have an issue next. with uh, chicken and egg. So what we're trying to do is work through that. Have you calculated on the conventional plan the wetlands crossing? the square footage impacted. Yep. And that is how much? We have here 1,400 with this crossing. We have 1,100 with this crossing. There's an existing crossing here and existing crossing here, which will be 1,100 too. OK. And this one is uh, we drove through it with you. It's, it's an existing crossing. Pre-existing. Yeah. And so how much is it? Just 30, it's total 3,600? Right. So those are, you get 14, 11, and 11? Yeah, and then there was the other one that doesn't count because it's existing. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. we don't foresee there being any. It's not an additional piece to your plan. So if I can ask, uh, so Jennifer, do we have the ability, if it's under 5,000, to without the CONCOM approval of the plan to designate that they have shown on the conventional plan 24 lots. Yeah, I'm not, I, I didn't say they had to go to CONCOM. I'm right. just well, saying that, that your was. criteria is that it has to be, the conventional plan has to be approvable under all okay. land use regulations. If this board feels that they've done enough to prove in, with Phil's testimony, with their testimony, mm -hmm. that it's approvable under all land use regulations, then in your mind they've met that criteria. Okay. End that's of story. To find out. Okay, so uh, uh, to, David, yeah, to my, that's what I was trying to get to with my point of order is that 8A is not a requirement. It is optional for us. And we as a board should decide whether we want to go through them or not. Right. And I think 8A should also be copied further down as far as the open space plan, after we decide on A point C point A point two, after that we well, should we be can just leave it open. It well, I think it's confusing where it is. Okay. So you know, one is discussing the conventional plan, which we don't have to go to them if we don't want. But the other one, we're discussing the open space plan, and we do have to go to them. Uh, I don't think anybody was saying we had to. I think we were saying that it was. What is our um, recourse? Well, no, no. I think we were asking them to go to. I, I directly heard them. No, no. Them I, to them. I brought it up initially, and my qu my question was, what information do we need from the CONCOM in order to approve the conventional plan, and are they required to go to it? And, or, or not, and did we think that they had enough information? Did, did they provide us enough with the information? I didn't say they had to go to the CONCOM. I, well, I didn't, wasn't talking about what you said. What I asked was, do we need to do 8A before? And this is my first comment that I made, and it was well, decided yes. So I'm sorry, maybe I misunderstood what you're saying, but I'm just going by what I heard, and I'm trying, I'm trying to be clear. It doesn't matter who said what said, I just want to be clear about our process. So I, I wouldn't take that personally. I'm just the item about Conservation Commission, as you know, I'm very much wanting us to get more in tune and yep. in cycle with them. Uh, I think we do need more information. I, I, th I think uh, uh, more information is uh, helpful. But that's a separate and discussion. Well, no, no, it, it's it's right here. No, uh, my, my question is what, about the process. What input is desired by the planning board? Right. And that's the process. Right now we're talking about why it's important for us to get some of this information. And as Muriel's point, I think, is the fact that we're making a decision on this plan or that plan, and Kelly's saying, well, we need more feedback. I'm, I'm just saying that's, that's why it's there. No, no, no. Just from my point of view, the process was not clear, so I was looking for clarity, and okay. that's all I'm saying. If you guys, I mean, if everybody else thought it was clear, can I'm I fine. suggest, based on the time, that maybe poll the board on what they think the step should be? Do we have enough information that we feel comfortable making a decision on the conventional plan and the yield? or knowing that I think the issue is CONCOM isn't going to give a definitive and may not give an answer, do we want to have them at least have a discussion with CONCOM and come back? And if we don't get a, an answer from CONCOM, we can address it at that point. 
So personally, uh, I think that I think that's <laughs> a straightforward way of approaching hold on, it. Hold and on, if, uh, Rafael, what's Rafael. your comment? I was going to say I think it would be very helpful if we had their wetland scientists provide something for us to look at to say that it is permittable. Cliff, without having. All to right, go. thank you. Through Jen, um, Jen. Well, through the chair. Uh, through the chair to Jen. Jen, <laughs> there was there was a discussion about crossings of wetland through from the Hopkinton Muse to Chamberlain on one of our discussions they could only have a certain amount of crossings no they can only have 5,000 square feet of disturbed, disturbed area of disturbed area mm -hmm. which is what they just right, they calculated they're minimized. under they're under the, you're under the 5,000 now is that that's correct. That's, yeah. that's correct okay so um, and none of those specs will change according to weather permitting and all that other stuff okay. Yeah, no, there will be less in the, in, the, in the open space. Right. Right, yes, yes, and I, ag I agree. Right, but no, the, 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 only, the only time they would potentially change is if there was a drastic change in the... Topographic. Uh, no, in the, in the where they delineated the wetland today versus this right. is from 2009. Okay. So, right. so doesn't the, point, the point, though, for 8A is do you think we need more information from CONCOM? I, I, I don't think that we need to go to CONCOM, but what I do think we need to do is to realize the, the, the amount of wetlands that are involved, when the timing was taken of the first assessment, and how does that look now? That's, that's the right. question. And then that's that, underway. May I point that's, out yeah. that once you finish your discussion, we are going to go in front of CONCOM, and they're going to discuss all the wetland issues. And then, furthermore, we're going to come in front of you again for the definitive subdivision. So if you have objections right. the number But the only, the only problem we have with that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're trying to The, the, the problem that we have with that, I have the floor. I have the floor, OK? So, so look, the, the question that I have is, is that for us to make a definitive decision on on the conventional plan, we're we're not we're not educated in concom. Okay, I mean we, we have a, a general idea, but we don't have the, those yeah. statistics that they have. Yeah. You're not bringing anything to us except the, the numbers, which is fine because that's what we're supposed to see. But what I'm saying is that between 2009, which was almost 10 years ago. And now, we've had a lot of construction and a lot of things changing in the di dynamics of this town. Yep. Could there be something here that has changed that we don't know about that could produce a bigger yield of wetland than what you what you have present at present? There's, there's been very little change. That's all flags. They're, they're but that's on that's on your assumption, and I don't I don't have anything to. Two thousand nine. No, no, they no, 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 they're flagging it now. Two thousand nine. And they flagged the site. And, and they be, didn't notice any major difference. Uh, what we're going to do now is survey the flags, and then uh, do the assessment. For abbreviated notes of. Uh, in front of the Hong Kong to confirm the wetland lines, but we don't expect any major change. Okay, but until you get that, how can we expect not to have any change? And that's and and that's an understandable piece of information for you guys to have to right. be able to make the decision. But it is a process. It's that's just right. something they've already said is being reflagged. So yes, uh, Amy, what's your opinion? I feel like we do pretty much have enough information to go ahead and recommend the open space plan. And I mean, it seems like they've proved that they can do the 24, maybe 23 lots. But if everyone tells me more information, because the con what the concom is not going to tell us definitively until they do the detailed plan. So I'm not sure that the delays, that it merits the delay. I don't know. But I want everyone to have the information. I could agree with you. I could agree with you, but I just want to make sure that we're we're all right, right. privy to it. Um, so yeah, so I didn't mean to kick up a dust storm, but apparently I did. Um, and at the risk of kicking up a little bit more dust, hopefully not. Um, are we sure that the improvements to the road to the existing uh, Whisper Way don't increase the wetlands disturbance? It definitely doesn't buy enough to 
throw it over the 5,000 because okay. the, the wetland crossings themselves over here are 1,000, 1,100, which we have that much room to play with anyway. So Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I would, you know, appreciate um, the more detailed wetlands um, information from the, the new flagging and your, your scientists and so forth. But I do appreciate that, uh, that there aren't any huge issues or no big, big red flags. Thank you. Frank, I'm comfortable uh, with moving forward with the conventional plan as stated. I think the information from beta, information from you guys, gives me enough confidence that I'm okay with that and then <coughs> give more detail on the open space plan. John? And I agree with Frank's comments. David? I agree with those comments and I feel we don't need to go to CONCOM for more information. Kelly? Um, well, initially I was thinking that we did need a little bit more information, but after Phil stood up and said he thought it was permittable, um, and um, uh, I, f I feel comfortable with that, so I'm good with that. So um, I think we need, we need more information, and I think that maybe that opinion is a little bit outnumbered. Um, I, I, I think it would be very helpful to have um, an opinion from <coughs> your wetlands scientists after the redelineation to have the wetland scientists give us something that says, you know, after looking at everything, we think that we could, we would, that the wetland crossing would be better. Uh, that is but an open question in my mind right now. Thank, is, thank what okay. is, we, we, we covered so that. The poll is five that are okay with what you have right. for that long form information. So, so I think that's kind of the difference if it's one person. Uh, um, but I'm not asking, Amy's, just Amy's for the record, I'm not asking for more information. Oh, I'm well, then that's six to three. Yeah, I'm only saying that it could it have changed enough to to where it makes a difference now, and that's yes. that's my that's my question at all. But it, but they've they've sufficiently answered that question by stating that it hasn't well, changed through their numbers and their scientific. It, is it safe? To, I think it's safe to say that by our next time we have them scheduled to meet be in front of us, we will have that information. And I think that maybe that will satisfy the board uh, so to be able to make a decision as far as uh, conventional plan versus open space, or do this? Jennifer, why can't we just vote on the? the yeah, I, I think we should. Yeah. I think we should too. I mean, You're I moving. You're moving. Vote You're moving for a vote. Be done with I'd it. second it. Yeah. Then you'd have to make a motion. <laughs> I would make a motion that the board entertain. Um, to approve the um, conventional plan as outlined in detail uh, in the the, uh, the diagram as stated. So can I just clarify? With you're not approving the special permit at this point. No. You're just no. approving the number of lots. Correct. 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 The conventional Correct. plan is 24. Yes. Yes. Is 24. there a second? A second. Um, and discussion. discussion. So I just think that, um, that I think I understand how the vote is going to go, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, but I don't know how we determine the number of buildable lots without a more current wetlands delineation, personally. And, um, should I go in order or just vote? There's nothing. I think that's a comment. If there's any more comments. Any more comments? Any more comments? Well, uh, I have one comment. Uh, just uh, <coughs> to reiterate, there will be less wetland impact on the open space than there will be on the conventional and but that, that's not what we're deciding that's right? Right? Uh, no that's not what we're deciding but what I'm saying in uh, just as an, an opinion is that there isn't a whole lot of impact uh, there's a lot less impact than the um, original plan to the open space plan the conventional plan to the open space oh, okay so any other discussion any discussion? I'm trying to. We're already over the time period, but if we can wrap it up, I think with it well, is it for just a vote. The vote yeah, motion. I, there's no public uh, input, right? The public. No, it's. I don't think that's allowed. It's, it's about among the, the board. So yeah, it's discussion among the board, and then it's a vote, and then we typically allow a public comment. So you guys a vote's been I'm not in the middle of a motion. Okay. But, I mean, don't have I mean unless they have like a point of order or right. clarifying information. Are there well, points of order clarifying information? <laughs> well, maybe just a clarification on the numbers. We're, we're talking about numbers of lots and, and uh, the numbers of lots that we're, we're, only, we're only creating 
21 lots. Um, the three 20 three. lots. We're removing a house, and um, so we're, we're not we're not creating 24 more lots. Right. Mm -hmm. 24 additional lots. We're creating Correct. 20 lots. That's a good point. Maybe we should state that in the motion. It's part of the yeah, okay. application. Yeah. All right. And uh, Phil? I think Phil. I just want to make a quick point. The although the wetland was delineated in 2003, the topography is pretty dramatic. Challenging. In that, in that, if it were if it were flatter and the water raised a foot, you, your your expansion of wetland would be significant. I don't think in this case that even raising it a foot would increase it more than five mm -hmm. or ten feet in any, any direction. And that would it'd still be under And everything's pretty much away from that lowest mm -hmm. point. Thank you for that, Phil. Thank you. All right, the vote is on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Nay. So Irfan, Muriel, and Frank. Any uh, abstains? <coughs> Abstentions? Nope. Uh, now we need to move that we Continue. reconvene. What's the date? Um, when do you want to come back? Um, when December 18th, we have a 7.30 and an 8.15. How long do you And then we have a back? discussion with Roy McDowell. <laughs> <laughs> what time slot's open? Can you translate? Um, well, the 8.15 is an earth removal permit. I've never done one of those here, so I don't know how long that's uh, going to take. So A30 will be open? Uh, that's a rule permit only takes 15 minutes. <laughs> I'd give it half an hour. Yeah, I mean, at least a half an hour, so I'd say 8.45. 8.45? But is that going to be enough time? Because you got Roy coming in to talk about treaty acceptance. What time is he coming in? He's oh, business to be discussed at any time. So should we just? 9 o'clock? Yeah. I mean, whatever you guys think, but I mean, yeah, you're not going to right. end up giving them maybe a half does, an hour. Does that work for the applicant? Forty-five minutes, or Whatever it's either sooner or for less time and later for more. That time. Or I mean, I think we'd rather come come to the next meeting. Sure. Yeah. Something will get. Yeah. Because if it's not December eighteenth, then it's January eighth, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. Nine. So nine o'clock. Nine o'clock on the December eighteenth. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, and we'll see you guys again. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Thank so you much, everybody. You that, did you vote on that? Oh, uh, motion. Close the public hearing. Motion to continue the public hearing. Second. Continue the public hearing. Second. Second. At 9 p.m. So, second. All in All favor? Aye. 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 Just switch Close. the rounds. Okay. <coughs> I gotta or organize yeah. myself here. There's something wrong with our court. And why don't we just take a quick break oh, and make a motion, motion to open the public hearing and then continue it for five minutes and we'll come back. So, so moved. moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Feel free to get
Okay, we will oh, I um, I didn't see it. Yes. restart. Um, <laughs> give me an official one. Hold on a second. Can you do this first? No. Um, open the public hearing, continue public hearing, 147 Lumber Street, commercial solar. <coughs> Voltaic Special Permit Application and Stormwater Management Permit Application. And just for the uh, record, uh, we have two people who uh, Cliff has left and was, is not able to vote because he has missed uh, two meetings and our fam has also uh, missed two meetings. So uh, we are down to seven decision makers. Cliff had to leave anyway. So yes, Cliff had to leave anyway. So. Uh, so I'll turn it over to the applicant to give an update uh, since our last meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Greg Carey. I'm the director of real estate and permitting for Clean Energy Collective. With me this evening is Ben Cherko, property owner at 127 Lumber Street, attorney Wayne Davies, uh, John Bensley from Beals and Thomas. Rich Kleiman from Climbing Energy and Doug Carton from Clean Energy Collective. Uh, since the last time uh, we met, we have made a couple of changes to the plan, which John will uh, go over with you. We did appear before the Conservation Commission on November 27th. The Conservation Commission has approved an order of conditions for the project. Uh, they closed the hearing to vote of approval. I expect to have those um, in order of conditions issued when they meet next, which is December 11th. Um, um, I'd like to ask John, um, if you would, to please review uh, some of the changes. There were one or two changes that uh, I think the board would be interested in. Can we just ask that you move the plan so the board yeah. can see it? Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, just so the camera can pick it up so the audience can watch the TV. There's a lot of logistical issues. <laughs> <laughs> we have needs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah on this side over here, so we can explore this for anyway. uh, As no, John Benzu feels in town with the site plan and change of this project. Since the last meeting, uh, the changes we made on this have been to the Conservation Commission's request, mostly dealing with wetlands and buffer zones. Uh, and additional plantings that I know that this board is, is certainly interested in. Um, so you may recall that at the previous hearing we had moved all of the solar panels outside of the buffer zone at the eastern side of the site, uh, which is this area here facing the abutters along Alexander. Uh, and we provided a continuous row of plantings or garbovites that were going to be interspersed with some other species in there to provide the variety. Uh, there are also supplemental plantings and shrubs that are proposed along this whole boundary in here that provide uh, wildlife habitat to uh, various and sundry uh, small and large animals out there. Uh, as well as some lower level screening. These aren't high plantings, but they certainly do provide some additional vegetation and understory in that area. More significantly, the changes at what we call the western side of the site near Lumber Street, where this is Lumber Street. There's a wetland area down here. In this area here, we've taken all of the solar panels and shifted them easterly so there are no more solar panels at all within the wetland resource area buffer zones. We've also added some additional understory shrub plantings in this area. So total on site now, uh, we have 325 shrubs in these planting areas in addition to all the, the trees that were proposed uh, previously and those have not changed. So those, those really are the, the changes since the last meeting. There were other changes that we made we feel that were significant that we described to the board at the last uh, 
hearing, including other plantings that were made, providing a wildlife passage between the two solar panels, areas the east and the west, um, and uh, providing and allowing for some of the trees, screening the trees to grow, grow to a higher height. So there are not a lot of changes. The changes were made. That's perhaps why the Conservation Commission became satisfied with this, approved it, and uh, is issuing an order of conditions for this project now. Okay. Question to the chair. You said you moved some of the panels. The total number of panels have not changed, correct? Uh, Doug, is that the case? It's the last time. Uh, from the last, from the last time, time, before it would going be production in the last time around. It would okay. be. I think it's roughly another 250 panels. Okay. So oh. it started somewhere around. Uh, there were 331 in the buffer zone originally, and now they're zero, so the total reduction there. The total reduction in the buffer zone, but you said that they had been moved elsewhere. So my question is, those 330, are they gone, gone, or are they just kind of now? Yeah. The, the, it would be a reduction from the last plan set of roughly 250. Uh, we're down roughly 1,300 from the original 500. Okay, so those have been eliminated. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. So that was my question. Hmm. Wow. I just want to, because Phil had to leave, but um, he did send an email today, so, and I'll just read it. Upon further review, revised plan changes include removing some arrays in the wetland buffer zones and provide additional plantings. This will not increase impacts associated with the project. Beta's findings and recommendations noted in their October 12th, 2017 review update letter remain appropriate in view of these changes. Quick question, Mr. Chair. I didn't understand the numbers of the reductions there. What was the, the amount reduced? I think 1,300. Uh, 1,300 total, in total. 1,300, but since the prior to the changes from Concom, another 310? Uh, no, I think that was 250. 250. 250. Approximations, but it's math. Okay. Fuzzy, but yeah. All right. Thank you. So we touched on the changes. Let's go back to what was still left open with screening. Any additional questions on the part of the board related to screening? I had one question, Mr. Chairman. The screenings, additional screenings, all for it, right, for the, the lower level, for the animals and the habitat. There was nothing um, that went any higher than the arborvitaes that were originally that are originally proposed, especially on the eastern array, which would abut up to the um, butters. No proposed plantings other than all the, the natural trees that are within the wetland area between the abutters and the project. And I think uh, importantly, that screening is capped at a certain height because of the it is solar panels, right? That's but correct. I do appreciate the efforts to add the additional screening, but just to make sure mm -hmm. the public knows that. They aren't going to be allowed to just grow. Right. Any comments from the public on the screening? Yeah, I'm interested in public comments because that was a concern. Yeah, come up and identify yourself and your address, please. I'm just curious, what is the cap for the height they could get allowed to grow? I believe we said it would be uh, between 15 and 20 feet. Okay, so that is the, the latest plan? Yes. Yeah. Any other comments? Can we put a check mark next to screening? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, review by other boards, CONCOM, we just discussed that. Anybody have any questions on that? Conditions. I had a question, for Chairman. He mentioned approval with conditions. Are those conditions something that typically, maybe I'll look to Jennifer on this, typically we would want to review prior to a vote or no? I wouldn't think you need to review another board's conditions. I mean, I talked to Don McAdam. Um, I think most of them are their standard okay. conditions that they put in all orders. Any other comments on that? Or can we put a mm -hmm. check mark? I, it just on that point, it, it does say that uh, set forth in the bylaw. So that means we're covered there. That concom is per covered there. Like Frank, at least in item two. I mean, in item one doesn't have that. Oh, it doesn't. Never mind. So eight A, we have a uh, check mark next to that. Number nine, public comment, discuss special permit, stormwater management standards. 
and plan revisions to be made. Any comments by the applicant? No, sir. No. Any questions from the I, I have a question, um, and I'm wondering, um, in general, how we reconcile uh, the stormwater guidelines that say um, minimizing um, clear cutting um, in a water resource protection overlay district for this project. Um, I just don't. I, I just don't know how that is. <coughs> handled. <clears throat> Jennifer, do you want to? I, I don't know that that's an answerable question. I think, <laughs> I mean, you're asking how you reconcile. Well, it says in the stormwater guidelines. Right. Right? Yeah. So maybe it's not a reconcilable question. It says in the stormwater guidelines that you're supposed right. to minimize. You, you're supposed to make an attempt to minimize tree cutting or vegetative cutting for stormwater, right? Right. And, but I think you have a project before you that you have to approve. So I think you as a board have to decide whether or not the project is beneficial or if the stormwater guidelines are being met, even with the clear cutting of trees. I mean, I, that's a, I don't know that's something I can answer for you. Yeah. Um, and Beta has said that it meets the stormwater guidelines. Yes. Thank you. Okay. That's how I reconcile it. Any public comments? We put a check mark next to number nine. Uh, discuss conditions of approval with applicant. And I know we've got uh, some comments, Mr. Davies, from you on the conditions. And maybe we go one by one, and maybe Jennifer, if you want to start walking through them, and then we can have a discussion on your comments, have a discussion on the board, and can we go from there? Okay, so uh, number one is that the vegetative plantation on the plan shall be completed concurrently with the installation of the solar facility with the exception that if the facility is constructed in the winter months, the planting may be deferred to the beginning of the next growing season. And I think that's acceptable as written. Uh, condition two. The solar facility shall be constructed in conformance with the approved plan, the stormwater management permit, and the order of conditions issued by the Conservation Commission. David, you want to, you have a, a change yeah, you to suggest uh, I think this is um, more of a comment on, on um, procedure. Um, the, by, by including the conditions of the CONCOM within your decision, you are actually bringing into uh, don't the, the concept of zoning. Um, areas which are of the exclusive jurisdiction of the CONCOM. So I mean, theoretically, um, and, and actually in actuality, um, these CONCOM conditions are enforced two different ways, under the zoning bylaws and under, under the uh, uh, Occupant uh, Wetlands Protection Act. Um, I, I don't think that is appropriate. Um, I don't think that this board has the right to enforce CONCOM <coughs> order of conditions. Um, I think that we have a comprehensive regulatory scheme here in town and each uh, separate board has their own jurisdiction and their own responsibilities and the enforcement of the order of conditions is in the sole and exclusive um, authority and jurisdiction of the CONCOM. Uh, I just don't think it's an appropriate uh, condition for, for it to be included under the zoning by law. Um, so I just um, speak to that a little bit, and I think this will apply to some of um, Mr. Attorney Davies' other comments, is that um, typically the board, uh, when they condition and things in the past, um, they've compiled a list of conditions that includes sort of just stating other items and putting everything in one document so that when the, the developer hands the special permit to a contractor, or if the project gets sold to somebody else, everything is sort of listed out and categorized and everything is clear 
and people aren't searching for a bunch of different things, they can just refer to. Them. So I think that's sort of the, the method behind the madness, so to speak. So that's where our, we were coming from, or I was coming from when I drafted these, but it's the, at the board's discretion. If I may, it's kind of like belt and suspenders. It's listing everything out, and there are a lot of conditions that are part of the state requirements and town and local bylaw requirements that are that are listed right, here. I'll, I'll give you an example of, of uh, where my problem is. Okay. Let's say there was a condition in the order of, in the order of conditions from the CONCOM that uh, we objected to. Okay. We could approach the CONCOM and we could negotiate with them the removal of that condition. Okay. Theoretically, <coughs> that condition isn't removed. It's a variance. <coughs> what, regardless of what you call it, if the condition is removed or modified before the CONCOM, that condition still exists in a separate enforceable um, uh, decision by the planning board. Okay? You, 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 you theoretically have to go back to the planning board and get that same condition. You're, you're duplicating the conditions. If and I may, through the, the chair, I think what Jennifer explained is that it's not super, not superimposing our will. It's saying these are the bylaws, and then this is the CONCOM no, conditions. No, with all due respect, you're imposing a condition. Uh, okay. The, these are these are six, 17 specific conditions that you're imposing. And if you have them all and those, and those listed here, have from weight. number one through down to the end. And if the project changes hands or whatever, here they are in black and white, so there's no prevarication. Well, I, I understand the convenience argument, okay? I, I, I understand that. And, uh, um, you know, that may have merit or may not have merit. I, I really don't know how to address it's convenient to have everything in one place. The simple fact of the matter is that you're, you're creating a separate, enforceable um, condition in an area in which you have no jurisdiction to regulate. And, and you may think that, that well, it's just a convenience that we're putting it in there, but you don't have, you don't have jurisdiction to regulate under the wetlands control act, and you should not be putting conditions in here that do that. What and, and it's a separation of powers issue. Yeah. What I suggest chair. doing, because we can, is Anything that you object to, what I would suggest is we turn it over to town council for an opinion and have them come back. Because I personally feel uncomfortable changing conditions that we've done in the past without getting town council input. So what we can do is run through state, you know, the positions you have so we understand that turn it over to town council for an opinion on whether we can include it or not. Mr. Chairman, I don't, I don't know if this is, is uh, I'm not making it just a legal argument, I'm making an appropriate argument, okay, whether it's appropriate for this board to be including conditions of another board. I mean, this is not necessarily legal, whether it's legal or not. Town council may very well come back and say, uh, you have the authority to do this. I, I would disagree with him, but he may say that. But the counter to that is that you shouldn't. Okay, you should not duplicate, you know, and create a separate enforceable condition in an area that, you know, we can't come back to you and say, and we can't go back to the zoning enforcement office. And just think about this. You put this in the condition here. Who decides whether there's compliance with the order of conditions? Condition one of your decision is the enforcement of that is the zoning enforcement officer, not CONCOM. So now we have the, now we have the zoning enforcement officer deciding whether or not a condition of the CONCOM is appropriate. I mean this this causes a very significantly difficult regulatory system. All I'm asking is, is that you respect the CONCOM. They have issued a, some decisions. We know we've got to comply with them. You know we have to comply with them. So let them be the enforcement officer. There's no need for you to put these conditions of other boards in your decision. 
Why don't we open, if I can, what I'll do, I think you said, why don't we go around the board and, and try to get um, sure. opinion on the board. So I don't think that we're enforcing the order of conditions. We're saying comply with with all the regulations. If there is any kind of enforcement that would come about, come about from a violation of the enforcement order, it would, uh, sorry, for the order of conditions, that would come from the Conservation Commission. Because well, as you respect. rightfully say, we don't have respect, jurisdiction. That's not what Condition 3 says. And that's not what the law is. Okay? Uh, and, and you'll see in my, in my comments, I specifically provide you that under Mass General Law 40A, Section 7, and Zoning Bylaw 210.155, the zoning enforcement officer has the mm -hmm. responsibility for enforcing all conditions which you put in this permit. Right. We're not going to. And, that, and that's my but my my point is, we're not going to be trying to enforce this conservation commission. Well, with all due respect, you're, you don't try to enforce it at all. The zoning enforcement officer tries to enforce it. Fair enough. And the zoning enforcement officer is not going to be enforcing that. That's the you Conservation Commission. Him. And, and, and with all due respect, you're actually telling him to enforce it by including this condition. You can't then just say, no, we, we really didn't mean what we said. We well, don't yeah. I, 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 okay, so now I think we've made the... Can I just make a request? Yeah. Could we have just a two-minute break, yep. just quickly, to huddle and come, okay. and come back? Sure. So we Thank, can you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. welcome. We're still on the camera. <laughs> can, can I ask a question or should I wait till they? If it's related. We gave them a two minute break. Oh, yeah. Is it about the Patriots? Is that what <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's, it's about Gronkowski. We can probably suspended. talk about it. Do you think one game was appropriate? It's it's probably not enough. <laughs> When my, we can't approve minutes already. Okay. Oh, oh good we idea. Oh, we don't have any. Well, I was just going to say, oh, I approved. didn't read minutes. How did that? <laughs> no. Sorry. So I don't think we can then in that case. End of the like, Can we draft up the minutes from the earlier <laughs> part of the meeting? Maybe we can. Yeah, Kobe, come on. Come on. Yeah. No, not tonight. Just a reminder that our next meeting is our ugly holiday sweater yes. meeting. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, I I'm sorry. Asking. No one told me that when I was running. It was, it was, it was oh, on yeah. your. Um, it was yeah. on the memo. Last time. It's not my job <laughs> description. <laughs> Is this not a requirement? No. Just have a little fun suggestion. with it. Just a so suggestion when, to add some lightness. When my so. one of my kids had an ugly sweater, you know, day at school. I dug one out from high school that I thought would be suitable. She goes, oh, that is way too ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm like, okay. So I have a question. What if I don't participate I and I win the award anyway? Yeah, yeah that is. Do you wear your ordinary sweater? Oh, my God. Not appropriate, appropriate Mrs. Carp, if you have to pass that picture around. Did you see it? It's been on Facebook, I, so I, I believe page. I have probably seen what you just It is a very oh, inappropriate was, sweater, but it was very <laughs> funny meeting. I have to put it in minutes. <laughs> That's right. Oh. You can we'll just attach it to the minutes. You can just describe it for it. I think you just to hear you say it. <laughs> so, Amy, thank you for uh, going to the uh, CS RAP meeting on oh, Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to go to the center school meeting this week. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, my son's winter concert. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do your kids are awesome? Might but a different day, yeah. Okay, excellent. <laughs> I was a little bit worried about that. Is it? Um, well, I am Rick, you worry, but I'm pretty sure mine are a different day. Yeah, oh, I would have to check. It's not what's ahead there. It's a camp today. You go to Zach on Wednesday? Kiss me up. It's just high school at the end of Jack. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Okay. So, how about if we discuss some compro um, compromise language? You know what? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Davies. Could we at least hear yeah. from the board? Sure. Oh, sure. Thank yeah. you. Amy. So we don't have a response from our attorney, do we, from the letter? So we have a letter from Mr. Davies from December 4th with suggested changes to the wording. No, we don't. No. We don't. This is not set. I need you guys to tell me to send that to Okay. <laughs> okay. So... <coughs> I don't think I have anything further. Yeah. 
So uh, just to, to the board, I have no trouble with the language as it is. I, we are not delineate, delineating out CONCOM's conditions nor attempting to control them. We're just including the fact that, the, that our decision is predicated on the compliance with CONCOM's conditions. So I'm fine with the language. Uh, my suggestion is to send it to our council for their opinion. Given the detailed nature of Mr. Davies' comments across the board on each of the conditions, I think this conversation is going to get pretty detailed. So, both my paper right now, right? Uh, I, I agree with Fran Mural. I think that um, uh, I'd like to hear what our town council says. But I'm also looking forward to hearing what Mr. Uh, Davies has said has to say. Further, um, it's an interesting idea, but. Uh, <coughs> Uh, this, uh, I think, you know, more information is always better. I would agree. Also, I am nowhere near close to being a lawyer, so I have to defer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have to defer. I mean, obviously, I, I hear what Mr. Davies is saying. It makes a lot of sense uh, when I hear him say it. Uh, but I also do agree that um, I, I don't think our intention is to try to enforce other boards' conditions. I think we were just clearly stating that um, our conditions are um, uh, that you meet that board's conditions. Um, but I do hear what you're saying, so I'm, 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 I would be interested in hearing, I guess, either council's opinion or if you say you have um, compromise language, I'd obviously be very interested in hearing that too. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just simply add at the end of that uh, of that sentence um, a reference that the order of conditions shall be enforced by the Conservation Commission and not the Zoning Enforcement Officer. So it would read as follows. The solar facility shall be constructed in conformance with the approved plan, the stormwater management permit, and the order of conditions issued by the Conservation <coughs> Commission. Said order of conditions to be enforced by the Conservation Commission. Any that discussion sound, or? That sounds reasonable. That sounds I think reasonable. that sounds fine about me. Yeah. I'm good. I have no issues with that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm uh, we can add that as to part of the things that our town council should review to be acceptable. The, mm -hmm. the only point I would make is that we don't say who's enforcing all the other ones, right? So this would be calling out separately. Well, I think it's I, going. I think we're, I think we're, we're aiming in that direction. Yeah. yeah, I think we're going through each of them. Mm -hmm. So I, I would just ask you not to assume, make these assumptions. Let's go through each one. Of Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think it might be easier to go through each one, explain it if you want to amend what's here, and then if we're not comfortable approving it without council, uh, we, we send Jeff. it all to council and do it that way. Okay, condition three. Mm -hmm. The director of municipal inspections will inspect the solar facility's construction for compliance with the special permit. The director of municipal inspections determines at any time before or during construction that a registered professional engineer or other such outside professional is required to assist <coughs> with the inspections. The applicant shall be responsible for the cost of said inspections. And if you have a yeah, I, mine is, is is cosmetic. I mean, I would I would clarify that it's actually the zoning enforcement officer that's making uh, the determinations. Um, the, the the thing that I'm always concerned about is in, in the event that um, the building inspector is not available, the assistant building inspector steps in the shoes. But we don't have an assistant building enforcement officer. Um, so, so the office that makes these decisions is, is really the zoning enforcement officer, not the, the building inspector. Happens to be the same person, but it's a different office. Comments from the. Okay. Oh, through Jennifer, or through the chair, does Jennifer? Does that make a difference? Which way it's worded? Or. Um. I don't think it makes a difference. We always say the direct municipal inspections, but I don't think it makes a difference. Okay. Yeah. This is not a meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Condition four. The stormwater pollution prevention plan shall be provided to the board prior to the prior to the commencement of construction. Okay. 
accepted. Condition five. The owner of the property and the owner or operator of the solar facility shall have a decommissioning agreement in place for as long as the solar facility is located on the property. Okay. Number six, in accordance with provisions of section 210-203E, the applicant shall post a performance bond with the town in an amount equal to the estimated cost to remove all components of the solar facility from the property, a letter of credit or other surety instrument in any amount and an amount equal to the estimated cost to remove all components of the solar installation of the property issued by a bank doing business in the Commonwealth pursuant to a proper licensure from the Massachusetts Division of Banks shall be one acceptable form of performance bond subject to a conformatory review by town council. The town shall be a dual obligee, obligee sorry, with the applicant owner under the de decommissioning performance bond to ensure that the town may avail itself of the bond in the event that the applicant owner of Hopkinton MA1 LLC fails to decommission the installation. No construction or preparation for construction shall commence on site until the applicant has posted a performance bond with the town in a form acceptable to town council pursuant to this condition. Um, Chairman, first uh, is that um, I believe that the amount should not be left open in the condition and uh, the applicant uh, uh, recommends $100,000. Uh, the second part of this is, is to provide due process and procedure for, for how uh, the we'll forfeiture of the bond occurs. Um, your condition is silent uh, in that regard. <coughs> and I have that uh, proposed language that, that provides a procedure. And it also uh, requires the return of the deposit um, after uh, the um, decommissioning has occurred, which again, your uh, condition doesn't require. So I, I think this is. Pretty simple language to, to suggest how this would occur. I'm going to touch on that. how do we determine the cost? Um, in previous installations, we asked them to provide an estimate and then we sent it off to our peer review engineer for confirmation okay. that that was accurate. Okay. And we'd be happy to provide you with an okay. estimate. Okay. And as far as the subsequent language uh, proposed? Maybe that one, that one feels to me like it should be reviewed by council, okay. for sure. Mr. Mr. Chairman, can I just say, if, if you good, did I understand that then we would leave it open? If, if you want an estimate, does that mean that the language would be open? No, what we do is we, hopefully by the next meeting, and it should be relatively fast, uh, we'd have, if there's anything going to uh, town council for questions, and in the meantime, submit to um, peer review the 100,000 and have them review it by the next meeting. I think normally we look for like a breakdown of the, not just like a flat fee. We'd want right. a breakdown of like what the costs are. And that includes bringing the site back to a vegetated Site. And when you say vegetated, what does that precisely mean? It's just like grass. Okay. okay. Um, I, I, I would agree with Muriel, Mr. Chairman, on the, the second part of that to be reviewed. Just looking in terms of the change, it looks like the, the suggested change in the last two sentences seems to be a little bit different than the, the two sentences that right. as listed. So just to get the uh, opinion of council on that, okay. I think it would be beneficial. If, if I can make a suggestion, Mr. Chairman, I, I have a copy of your your decision, your findings and decisions for Marathon Solar LLC project, and it was condition number eight dealt with decommissioning um, and at that time there, there was not an amount determined right. but it was subject to approval so if okay. that language if you're comfortable using that language from that decision we would be I believe it's the same exact condition. Language. Oh I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but we would be comfortable with okay. that language. 
So it is a question on the subsequent language. Okay. Condition seven. All signage at the facility. Can, I'm yeah. sorry, what was the resolution on the rest of the second? I think the rest of the going through is. Going to town. Going the last two okay. sentences. Okay, can, can I ask a question? Because um, we want to try to we want to try to get as much progress we can at, at this public hearing, uh, <coughs> as many issues as we possibly can. So, let me ask, as proposed by the town, the, the principal plan, what is the procedure that is proposed? Because the condition is silent. How does this work? Jennifer, do you want I'm to? I'm not sure what you're asking me. How, how do you um, avail itself of the bond? How does the uh, town well avail that, itself I mean, of the bond? What's the that procedure? would be a question for town council. When we take bonds from people, we go through town council. I don't take bonds from people. I don't know what their procedure is. So it's basically so, the wording of the bond itself. Yeah. It makes I mean, the determination and the language negotiated as <coughs> <laughs> which will get which will get reviewed correctly town council. or accepted. Okay, should we go to seven? So are we not sending that to town council? Well, well, I I'm think sorry. It, um, my client is, would, would agree to the languages. Uh, okay, as, as proposed. Thank right. you. For seven. Condition right. seven. All signage at the solar facility site must comply with Article 27 of the zoning bylaw and grant in the grant of the special permit is not an approval or authorization of any such on site signage. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, what struck me in this and a variety of other um, conditions that specifically reference the zoning bylaw is that these are all included in your approval criteria. So in order for you to approve the project, you have to have, you have to enter findings that these are in compliance. So I I'm not sure I understand why these are added again as conditions because they're really preconditions. Right. They're not. They're not post conditions of the decision. So, I think we use this as a clarification that it was reviewed, considered, and approved. Well, so, and I think this one specifically is saying that signs have not been approved at this site. Right. And if signs go up, they have to be approved under our sign bylaw. Right. To let everybody know that that's the case. Just so that I, I'm clear, is that who makes that determination? Who makes what determination? That the signs are in compliance with the zoning bylaw. The zoning enforcement officer. Okay. And this goes back to the exact same comment, uh, and, and is that why is it then a condition of of, of, the, of the special permit? That's, I understand. I think my client, you know, would agree to the language that you proposed. Okay, thank um, you. I just think that it's unnecessary and really shouldn't be in there because of exactly that reason okay. that the issue is going to be decided in the future by the zoning enforcement officer. Condition eight. The operator of the solar facility shall conduct vegetation control on site. No pesticides, herbicides, or other chemical products shall be used. Vegetation control by mechanical means may occur <coughs> only between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. pursuant to Chapter 141, Article 1 of the Town of Hockington General Bylaws. And that's accepted as written. Condition 9. The solar facility shall be subject to all setback, yard, and buffer and screening requirements applicable in the agricultural district pursuant to section 210-202B of the zoning bylaws. And I think that the general comment you have applies to subsequent. Yeah, all the way up to, to 13. So we would read the proposed language all the way up to 13. Okay. Thank you. 
anyway. Yes. Uh, yeah. Number 10 is all security fences surrounding the installation shall be set back from the property line at a distance equal to the setback requirement applicable to buildings within the agricultural district pursuant to section 210-202C of the zoning bylaws. 11 is no lighting shall be permitted at the solar facility site except as required by the Massachusetts State Building Code. All lighting must be directed downward and full cutoff fixtures shall be used pursuant to section 210-202F of the zoning bylaws. As number 12, as required by section 210-202I of the zoning bylaws, the owner or operator of the solar facility shall maintain the facility in good condition. Maintenance is to include painting, structural repairs, continued compliance with the landscaping and screening requirements, and the integrity of the on-site security measures. The owner or operator shall also be responsible for maintaining any access roads serving the installation site. 13, if the Director of Municipal Inspections determines pursuant to Section 210-204 of the Zoning Bylaws that the commercial solar photovoltaic installation has been discontinued, the owner shall remove the installation, including all structures, equipment, security barriers, and transition lines, and stabilize or revegetate the site as necessary to minimize erosion and sedimentation at the owner's sole expense within three months of receipt of the notice of discontinuous pursuant to that section. Yeah. 14. If the solar facility shall not generate any noise, no, oh, sorry, the solar facility shall not generate any noise that can be heard at the property line. <laughs> this includes the transformer and meter clustering. Mr. Chairman, I just don't know how that's enforceable. Um, you know, that's gonna, it's going to be subject to varying um, interpretations. I, I would, the language that I recommend is, is just that it's, it's really in compliance with the noise level of the okay. Discussion? I mean, I think Attorney Davies has a, has a valid point here. I mean, how would you, unless we're going to go out and take measurements of sound right now. I'm fine with it, Matt, meeting that zoning bylaws, the language is proposed. Amy? Yeah, I guess I'm just a little, a little uncomfortable changing everything without our attorney's opinion, but. Um, <coughs> well, we're going to ask him something else if you want I mean, throw that out there if you want. Okay. Okay. I'm not anything yet. Yeah. At the very beginning? Number two. Oh, are we asking about number two? Yeah. I, I'm okay with the proposed language from Attorney Davies. I'm okay with uh, Attorney Davies' uh, recommendation. I'm okay with the change. I'm okay with the change. I'm okay with the change. So we're changing it to say the solar facility shall be maintained in compliance with all noise level requirements under the bylaws and zoning bylaws of the town of Hockington. Do we have to vote? To no, because you'll vote on the we'll vote on ones. at the end. We'll the blue, on the conditions. Condition 15. 15. Prior to any construction or preparation for construction, the applicant and owner with will, oh, sorry, I should say, will provide a surety in the amount of, and I left it blank because I wasn't sure what the planning board wanted to do, to secure the future maintenance of the required screening for up to five years. The surety shall be in the form of a perpetual surety bond or by a deposit of money. In the event that the owner does not follow the maintenance procedures or the screening dies within the five year period, the board shall have the authority to expend any portion of said security for this purpose. So I just need direction on costs. And Mr. Davies, I think you're proposing uh, 2500 Correct. Okay. Discussion from the board? I just, I'd just be curious how they came to that number. Um, I, I thought there was discussion at one point that um, once the five years was up, it would be re-reviewed if needed. That was for the storm that, that was for storm okay. okay. All right. How, how did you come to the 2500 It was just an estimate our O&M team gave to us. Okay. It just seems like an awful lot of shrubbery that, yeah, that, so that may, could die. <laughs> maybe suggestion of just the, the replacement cost of any of the shrubbery that does die? Instead but of it's it, a bond, so we need the money in advance. Right, well, mm -hmm. the amount. Well, if you're comfortable with a different figure, we're open right. to it. Okay. You can get a couple trees pretty quickly at 2500 the, the first year of, uh, after planting, yeah. all of the shrubs are, gar are guaranteed by a warranty. So it would really be after that. Post year so one. they'll get replaced automatically at no cost. But this is also for maintenance, right? So that's also going to include 
pruning and well, if they don't do those things, we would then expend that funds. Like, they're expected to do those things. Right. right. It's if they. If run we away, end up having to do it. So if they, that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. If they get, if they run away, I mean, we don't know. We know what the cost of replacement is, but we don't know what the cost of maintenance right. is, what the pruning costs are. So I guess. Spitball. Similar to the the the, the bond, I mean, we could have a, an idea. I think it'd be helpful for what it's going to cost to maintain it for five years. Like five hundred. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Wayne's best estimate. <laughs> no, I, if you have another amount that you want us to consider, I do. Yeah. I, I don't have any experience to inform any. this. I have no idea. Yeah. I, do you want, if you have what? no objection, and to move things along, if we can make it the same as the the other one? The decommissioner. Like that's fine. Ten to ten. Ten thousand. Or the strong one. I'm strong one. Yeah, yeah. If you want to make it at the decommissioning, <laughs> <laughs> we'd be happy to do that. <laughs> I actually had that figure in my mind. So the stone water bond is <laughs> fine with us. And again, on uh, 15 and 16, we'll check the one. Okay. And then 16 is um, prior to any construction or preparation for construction, the applicant owner will appropriately provide a surety in the amount of $10,000 to secure future maintenance of the stormwater management system for up to five years. The surety will be in the form of a perpetual surety bond or by a deposit of money in the event that the owner does not follow maintenance procedures programs as provided by the planning board, as approved by the planning board, the board shall have the authority to expend any portion of said security to provide for such maintenance. Um, and I did add the renewable feature. Yeah, so I, th I would add the renewable feature so here if you are... Uh, in agreement to that because uh, that was a discussion at the end of the five year period. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Question from the audience? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, Alexander. Um, one of the reasons that this storm water was put in was there was a problem with water up behind the and that was one of the reasons that we had them look at the water again and have a basin, another basin added. So I'm wondering how they came up with $10,000 for this to be, if, if this should fail, if it caused flooding to our properties, how 5,000 would be an adequate amount for the first five years to ensure it actually works. It's not the amount to do any remediation. It's the amount we hold a bond in case they don't. So they're still required to to do what they need to do. It's basically an amount if they walk away at some point. So you do have the ability to say the amount should be higher, um, but then the question then becomes anything is probably going to be happening early on in the project. We know if something's not working. Uh, and I doubt if they would walk away at that stage from the, the project. And to answer your question, the amount was suggested by the applicant. That's yeah. where we came up with that. Through our engineers. Yeah. So a you good point. an adequate amount well, that let's will be an adequate five years of maintenance of this they should walk away? It's not. It's just, it's just a bond. It's just right. like, I yeah. But that. that's what the bond is yeah. for is yeah. if they walk bond. away. Yeah. And you feel that's a sufficient amount? Like well, now? let's take a... Uh, I have no idea whether yeah. 10,000 is enough. You know, I rely on the expertise of the engineers. And I would think it would depend on what failed and what yeah. 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 Well, Like if yeah. five homes' basements were flooded, that 10,000 is not very much. Yeah, it's, it, it's not but intended to uh, yeah. repair private property. Okay. It's, it's really intended to make sure that the system as designed and approved by peer review consultant is maintained properly and works. Okay. Mm -hmm. My name is Gujar. Uh, just to shed some light for the audience on how this really works from a practical perspective, but the, we don't get a project signed off until it's um, stabilized in its final state. So you know pretty well by the time you got through full stabilization, stabilization, we broke the base and whether or not it works. You usually see failures well before that happens, and it typically you actually prohibit the basin from stabilizing. Any other discussion? Are we comfortable with it? Somebody else? Any other public comments? 
Any other comments from the board on the 10,000? Are you comfortable? Do you want to? One question, maybe Jennifer, for you. Do we have any other data points that on any other projects that we've seen? We have not required, that I could find, required this type of surety in other projects. All right. It is allowed under our bylaw, but we've not done it. We've never done it. This is kind of first. Are any of the members of the board uncomfortable? With the amount? I'm fine with it. It seems a little low to me, but I'm afraid I don't have any cost basis to, you know, I don't have any data to back up how high, what it should be. Um, so I, I don't know. So I don't hear comments one way or the other, which then would indicate, and I do take into account the, the public comment, but realistic when something would happen is early enough in the project that it, it Can I just yeah. Up? So the last two years have been extremely dry. So by the time that this has been being studied, it's been everything so dry, which normally that's not the case. So we're, I'm, I'm not talking about at the, when they first build it. Right now it's very dry if you go right. back there. Um, I'm worried about that they may not have looked at it in its peak period when there's a lot of water. Yeah. And again, with the bond, as if they fail to do what they're supposed to do, which typically means they've <laughs> abandoned the project. So if they're still required to, to make the conditions right, it's only if they walk away from the project and we have to step in as a town. So, you know, it's... And this is strictly for maintenance, so it's like cleaning and right. mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So I, I don't believe this would apply if it fails completely. Right. I mean, I still think that's obligated. a whole different well, kind of... It can overflow. Right. Yeah. Right, but, but this would not, like... We could not use this money to, like, repair a damage to your private property, though. Right. No, no, I'm not okay. looking for you to okay. do that. No, no, okay. I understand okay. what it's for. Okay. I'm just saying okay. that if it doesn't work properly... This is just maintenance. This is just maintenance. It's just for maintenance, okay. so. Yeah. yeah, I think 10's okay. I just kind of feel that. Can we say 10 is? Okay. 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 17. Prior to any construction or preparation for construction, the property owner shall receive approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals to amend the variance dated June 19, 2000, to allow access to the property for the purposes of a commercial solar photovoltaic installation. <coughs> Davis. Mr. Chairman, um, this is this poses a um, most significant uh, issue with respect to these conditions. Um, so let me ask the board: Why are you putting this condition? Would you like me to answer? <laughs> because town council told us to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we received an opinion, we asked for an opinion from council, and the the options were to halt proceedings and make them go get the variance at that time, and then have them come back and get the special permit, or continue with the special permit public hearing and condition it to allow the special permits. And so, what you're saying is, is that town council is stepping into the shoes of the zoning enforcement officer and you're following along with it. Yeah. Actually, I don't think that's what anybody's yeah. saying, yeah. frankly. So here's the problem. The opinion of town council is not appealable. It has no weight. There's no due process. There's no remedy for us. Okay. <coughs> and therefore, town council's opinion as a matter of law are simply that, it's an opinion. The guy's opinion, or actually the guy's determination, that is important and is the sole and exclusive decision in this town under the zoning bylaws, under Mass General Law 48, Section 7, is the zoning enforcement officer. And so it's his opinion that counts because if he says access is legal then town council is wrong and so would the planning board be 
Now, this is the, this is the, a very similar argument that I made under the CONCOM, the separation of powers. Why don't we let the zoning enforcement officer do it? <coughs> We've actually contacted him. We asked for an enforcement order. I sent the chairman a copy of our request for enforcement order. We got a response back from the ZEO and said he'd be pleased to address this issue, but format it in a different type of decision of the enforcement order. He, a he asked us to ask for a determination of rights, which we did last week. And we're waiting to receive a formal response from him. It now, came this afternoon, you didn't get it? Yeah, I, I did. Okay. And the good news is, okay, that whichever way he rules, anyone aggrieved by that decision has the right to appeal to the Board of Appeals. And it will, that issue will be adjudicated in the proper form at the Board of Appeals. And if anybody's aggrieved by a decision of the Board of Appeals, it may be a further appeal to Superior Court and Fort Land Court. And that's the due process that <coughs> involved here. You're saying we need to go get a variance. Well, what if we don't? Then you've got a condition in here that you're requiring us to something to do that we don't legally have to do. So I think it's appropriate that the planning board understand its limitations. You're not, you're not to interpret the meaning and, and the, the, uh, the variances. This is not your job to interpret variances. The building, permit, the building inspector and zoning enforcement officer is not going to issue a building permit if there's no legal access to this property for this facility. Okay, just like CONCOM is not going to, um, you know, a building inspector is not going to issue uh, a building permit unless CONCOM issues more conditions. And if there was some type of poor health issue, you wouldn't get a building permit unless there was, there was compliance with the Board of Health. I mean, that's the way things work. So, and I do say this respectfully, let the zoning enforcement officer do his job. We don't agree with that council. Okay, we have a letter from the four, from the four people who wrote the variance. Three, Mr. Okay. Just for the record, you are one of those people, Mr. Davies. So you and, and and for the record, you sat on the board of appeals. I did and indeed. You understand the process. I do indeed. Okay. For you, Mr. Chair. So is the applicant asking us to remove something that town council asked us to add? Because mm -hmm. we'd have a hard time with that. I'm asking you to understand that you, your your job is not to enforce the zoning bylaws it, or to interpret. It, it was a yes or no <coughs> question. Um, I'm asking you to delete. The, the condition because we, we simply can't live with this. You, you get, and I want you to recognize you, you are possibly wrong and you are denying us due process and the right to appeal to the zoning enforcement officer and get a decision from him and if agreed to further appeal to the Board of Appeals. That's the process of the Zoning Act under 40A. Are you not? And Mrs. Kramer understands that. Are you not able to appeal the Planning Board Special Permit decision when it's court? Well, so there's your appeal. Well, with all due respect, the reason that the Zoning Act sets up an appellate, an administrative appellate process in town on this, on the decisions of the Zoning Enforcement Officer is to allow landowners to adjudicate their claims of being aggrieved in a cost-efficient manner and simply saying, okay, fine, take it to the court, end up in three years of litigation, and that's just the way it goes. That's not right, okay? That's not right. So, so, so my, you know, my proposal is that, you know, you drop the, you drop the condition because it's not in your jurisdiction. Okay? The other alternative that I'm willing to, to 
you know, consider is that you acknowledge our due process rights and you allow us to go forward and you agree to whatever determination is made by the process that's been set up by this town. Okay? You shouldn't be making this decision, but you should be respecting the decision of the zoning enforcement officer or the decision of the, of the Board of Appeals or the decision of land court. You shouldn't be deciding this, and town council shouldn't be deciding this. Mr. Chairman, um, so there is a path forward for the applicant, and this is similar to other conditions that we, we put in um, to decisions. And the path forward is the Board of Appeals, whether we acknowledge and use the town council's language or we accept Attorney Davies' um, path. And I just, I, mean, I for one, am absolutely standing on town council's decision. I don't know how we do as a board, how we do anything differently. Um, and it is not, it's not a stop sign. There's a path forward. Now, if you want us to wait until you get that decision from the Board of Appeals, the, you know, that's possibly something the board can entertain. Um, but we okay. simply have, I'm sorry, please don't interrupt me, Mr. Davies, please. Um, so uh, for me, as one board member, um, I, don't, I don't see another way forward other than to use town council's decision and the language that council has provided us, understanding that there is a path forward for you. So, you know, there, the Board of Appeals is, is your answer either way. Any events? Do the chair. I think, I think um, Attorney Davies makes a valid argument, but I think there's ways of, uh, I would not want to go against town council's advice in any circumstance. Um, so I think rewording it, I think what, our, what we're trying to get at is legal access. And I think that uh, we could probably reword this in such a way. And I would want, still want to run that through town council. Um, but to say applicants should, shall ensure that they have legal access to the property, that's ultimately what we're trying to get at. I'm not comfortable removing um, the language suggested by the town council. With, um. yeah, I, I, hold on, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would tend to agree with Muriel and the other comments here. Is there an opportunity for Attorney Davies to talk with town council? Is there some type of agreement or language that they could be agreed upon? Um, if there's not, then to Muriel's <coughs> point, there is a pathway to kind of work through this process. But I'm not going to go against. And the pathway to, to, the, to resolve this process is not discussions with the zoning with the uh, town council. He has no authority under the zoning bylaw. And, and I, I keep saying this, and I, and, I, I, and I say this respectfully, okay? Please have an understanding of Mass General Law 40A, Section 7, and the zoning bylaw 210-155. Read it. It says the zoning enforcement officer shall enforce the zoning bylaw not town council okay and so i, and, I think so, that we're, we're so let me it. ask you a question for the for the board and here's here's the problem this says we need a variance we got to get a variance what well, happens it's, it's says you need to amend your existing variance is what it says fine okay we we have to we have to amend it or we have to get a variance what if we win our appeal what if the building inspector says we need, you know, we need a variance. He agrees with, with the town council. And what if the Board of Appeal says you're wrong? You don't need one. You win. Okay. Well, your requirement is to get a variance. Maybe, maybe we could just reword section 17. It's rewritten to, 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 to say that. Okay. Let me write it then. If, right. I, if, I, I, could could suggest, if I could suggest maybe... We, I sat on boards with town, a legal counsel on the board that would help update and recommend changes. Sometimes they have to go, they come back the next meeting and give us more fine-tuned uh, response. In our situation, we're an elected board, and I think it's important to say that, um, so I'm saying it, uh, but we're relying on town council, Jen Jennifer's working with them, the them, because they're, they're a team that we've hired, uh, but maybe us talking with them, because maybe our concerns shared with town council, uh, so that our concerns can be reflected in maybe his answer. Uh, town council meeting <coughs> with their council uh, might be a, a more information passed 
uh, more of a solution. It could just be simple wording, as Fran is saying. Right. Yeah. If I can yeah. make yeah. a suggestion uh, to, to do, because as a board, traditionally, we will not go against town council. So what I would suggest, I think, in discussing our fan, you made a very good point, is if it's agreeable with the applicant, we present to town council something like adding or is otherwise adjudicated under town bylaws. And if it's acceptable, you know, come up with language with that basic concept to say as otherwise de or as otherwise determined. If that's acceptable to you, we'd present that to town council to come up with a wording and then we can I think if town council approves that, I think the board, looking at the board, tell me if I'm wrong, would be comfortable with that. Yes. I, I agree with that approach. Let me propose the following language, okay? If you look at paragraph 17, strike the words, the property, shall, the property owner shall receive approval from the zoning board of appeals to amend the variance stated June 19, 2000. Okay. You strike that language. So it reads as follows. Prior to any construction, and, and I would also take out preparation of construction because quite frankly, we are preparing for construction by just not being here. Okay. So prior to any <coughs> construction, or if you'd like, prior to issuance of a building permit, if that's more appropriate. Okay. Prior to issuance of a building permit, to allow access to the property for the person, purpose of a commercial solar uh, photo installation, legal access for the intended use shall be determined by the ZEO, Board of Appeals, or Court of Competent Jurisdiction. It, it, would I be wrong in thinking that that's still a need to be reviewed? No, it's still a need to be reviewed. Yeah, it's still a need to be reviewed, but it's... Uh, I mean, I'm amenable, obviously, to, to change the language as long as it can be reviewed and we get the go-ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. I don't have an issue with the wording. I think it should be run through council, but okay. yeah, I don't have an issue with it. Would you like to sweep that again, Jim? No. Okay, so <coughs> we're looking for for you to vote tonight. Um, the only suggestion I would make in the wording is just to leave the beginning of the sentence like it is because other sentences are of the same format prior to any construction or, pre or preparation for construction. It's not, it doesn't sound like it's a big deal to you. Yeah. Okay. So if, if I can summarize what I think the changes in conditions, because we capitulated on most of the stuff we've asked for. Um, Number two, at the end of number two, said order the conditions to be enforced by the Comcom. Yep. I would add uh, something new under three, just to, to um, the, you have the director of, ins of municipal inspection to inspect the facilities of construction. I would all just add the word, two words, and operations for compliance with the special permit. The board's call. Okay. <coughs> okay, sir. Okay. <coughs> and the third one is the last, uh, is the last 17. We're going to change 14 to your language. Oh, and I'm sorry, 14, correct. Correct. We fixed an amount in 15. 15, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 15 was 2,500. 10K, 10K. it closed, 10K. Mr. Davies. And then 16, we added to renew it for another five years. Renew, yep. correct, I'm sorry. And you'll note that we have requested a new condition 18. Well, that's one that we would have to ask town council about. Typically, special permits do not run with land. What is, and I, and I do say this respectfully. Thank you. What is the legal issue? You Look, we're just gonna. If we're asking him about other things, we'll ask him about this too, because that is atypical in the special permit process. <coughs> That's at least my my opinion. That's perfect. Okay. 
So, um, again, we're looking, you know, to possibly get a vote from you tonight. What is? I think that's what language that, unless people are comfortable with the language, as stated, is anybody? Let's take a vote, or let's take a Strong informal poll. Who is comfortable with the language changes as stated? Adding condition 18 or without condition 18? Adding condition 18. Adding condition. Being comfortable without. Uh, without, without going into council. council. Oh. Not me. No. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be voted on tonight. What I would suggest is, does anyone have an objection to starting the meeting on the 18th earlier so we can address this first and get this? Can I ask a question? We, can we vote on it with contingent upon? I would in case. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Just asking. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm amenable to coming at seven. I, I, I'm, I agree with that. that okay. Okay. So we can get them done. Okay. Thank you. What night is that, the 18th? Mm -hmm. It's Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One what is it? Ugly sweater night. Oh, I am going to fail this. If, if you guys give me the award and I have just come in front of my And that husband. way we can handle it quickly if it should go. <coughs> so are you leaving the public hearing open then? Yes. Continuing? Continuing. So we'll need a motion and a vote. I'll move to continue the public hearing to December 18th at 7 p.m. Second. All in favor? Discussion. Aye. Right. Discussion. I think, I think we're going to be out of town on the 18th. Boy, that, yeah, so that We're limits business. their voting. How many? Well, uh, okay, so then there's so that's, a, that's just a question so for them. That's, so that you need a unanimous vote, and that will be up yeah. to them. Yeah, okay. it's up to the applicant. Is, is it possible? We're just looking at uh, Wayne's schedule on the 18th. Uh, flying into Logan, and I arrive at 5 p.m. So okay. there's well, more information. Yeah, I'm going to be out of town on business um, that night, so I will not be. So, so then we're down to voting six member. voting members. Which you would then need a unanimous vote. So it's up to you. Um, we're, we're, we're down to seven out of nine right now. We are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who are the two that are not? Irfan, Irfan and, and Cliff. Cliff. I'm sorry. Irfan and, and Cliff. Cliff. That's and, <laughs> and they've missed two meetings? Yes. You know, we need a majority of the membership, not the, the majority of the quorum. Correct. So we're down to seven of nine. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, five of nine. Seven of nine. No, a special permit, you need oh, six what? votes. You six need, six yeah, you need votes. a votes. So six to right. So you need a unanimous vote at that point. If we if, were down, if Fran, Fran is no, not I'm participating. I am out. I am out. But you would be at the January meeting, for example. Yeah. 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 So we need seven of nine and six of nine? I'm sorry. Seven, seven of nine right now. Seven people right. can vote. Right. And, and you, six you need six, six, yes, six yes, of six. the seven yeah. Yeah. votes. Six out of seven versus six out of six. Right. Mm -hmm. Can we have a minute? Yep. 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 Sorry, guys. No know. What are you going to do? No, it's good that you I'm glad bills. you thought of it now, seriously. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to add it before they a dollar for each tip in the bus. What's that? You've got to pay the bills, is that what you said? Yeah, pay the bills, yeah. College tuition. Yeah. It starts from there. 2025, I'm done. <laughs> I started in 2000. I just want you to know. <laughs> You can't ever really afford children, so you know, you just have to. You just have to. You do it out of love. Oh, I think that was a great microphone. I, I give to my children with siblings. I tell them that a lot. There's not a lot of this stuff in their life. They have college first, that was that's just their reality. That, like, but then it wasn't. But lots of siblings. They will be well out. taken care of into their future. And you'll be well taken care of. I hope so. I sure had fun raising them. Yeah, they don't mean Yeah, no, they don't. You wouldn't have to say it if you were respecting someone. Not just on there. We are. With all of the due respect. Yeah. Or is it this much or is it this much? Shh, guys. Yeah. We're on the air. 
We're live. I call the hot mic. Right. From what I've seen, the hot mic makes no difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. You can deny it too. <laughs> well, in this in, in this reality. <laughs> So just to be clear, help me out, I'm a little stubborn on this. So 250 less panels? Yes, from the last presentation to this presentation. 1,300 total less 1,300 total. What was the, f uh, the, uh, the start number? Yeah, that's like, right. It was like 4,000 something. Okay. It was a lot. It was, it was yeah. a big number. Uh -uh. Thank you again. You're welcome. We want to try to move this process forward. Um, is there language, if, if assuming we delete 18, is there language that you can that you can accept for 17 that will allow us to proceed without a variance if we obtain if we win an appeal at the zoning board of appeals? So if we leave the language in as 17 as is, okay and say approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals um, on a favorable appeal or to amend a variance? I, I, I would make a suggestion and I ask the board, and assuming this is resolved, ask the board to, uh, because I think there's not a comfort level of changing anything when we have specific instructions from town council. Mm -hmm. But I will ask the board if there is another adjudication, would the board be open to uh, having the applicant come in to just amend that section? if there is another adjudication for that issue. So in layman's terms? In other words, yeah. Yeah. if... <laughs> no, wait, 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 you're an attorney. Yeah, so yeah. in, in other words, terms. if it's determined that Thank they don't need the, uh, the, the ZBHH and there's some other determination that the town agrees to, whether it's the zoning officer or something, we can have them come in and we'd be open to amending the language to accept whatever that legal determination is. Let me see if I understand you. If we vote this tonight, and if town council decides that it's okay to change language. Or they go through a procedure, get either whatever, if they get a resolution that's acceptable to the town that says, yeah, they've achieved the purpose. But it's not the amending the variance. Right. John is saying, would the board be open to them just coming in and just modifying the special permit with that condition? Just modifying that. Con I think that's what John's saying. Yeah. So we would vote it the way we, the attorney wrote it tonight. Right. But we could amend and it And we later. would, it's up to the applicant to decide whether they're comfortable with that. But it basically allows them to get approval and knowing that you know, the board, if there was another adjudication and has blessing. Well, what is the typical process for changing the conditions once an I mean, approval they'd have has to been come voted? Back for it with an amended session. Yeah, but I want to give some assurance that we'd be open to well, it. Well, we would always entertain it, right? Is there any reason why we wouldn't entertain somebody yeah. bringing it forward? No, you would always entertain it. But yeah, I, I want to try to give some assurance. to have some comfort level that the board would have. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say you're going to so, approve so it, but you, this is really worrisome to me because you're, what you're discussing is that you'll entertain the fact that the zoning enforcement officer and/or the board of appeals, who are the people under the zoning bylaws authorized to make these decisions, rule in our favor. But you guys won't acknowledge that. Just for the record, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. saying. Oh, what I, what I, I think we would do is, that's not is what get the saying. opinion of town council <coughs> and the blessing of town council that it's been adjudicated. And based on that, we could then act. So do you, are you wanting us to vote it with this language tonight? Uh, my suggestion was to vote it with this 
language with the exception of including if required by the zoning enforcement after the words approval from the zoning board of appeals if required by the zoning enforcement. I'm not we're, I'm not considering changing the language without looking asking the attorney first are okay. you comfortable with us voting the language as it's printed no and then if you were to get a favorable decision from the zoning enforcement officer come back to us and ask us to revisit that and say yes see, then we're fine with it mm. that's what we're saying sounds let, tricky let, let me ask you a question <laughs> and, and you said no no this isn't going to happen but you just said if we get a favorable decision to come back and ask you to eliminate the requirement of the variance so we win we get the ZEO to agree with us, or we get the ZBA to agree with us, or we get Superior Court or Land Court to, to agree with us. And you're not going to honor that. You're going to ask us to come back for it before you and ask you to honor it. And you're not required to 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 accept the decisions of the ZEO. And well, I think the other I, I think we're uncomfortable making any changes without town council. So I either we, we've got two weeks. You know, we've got two weeks before the next. One. Okay. So if you want to. Wait the two weeks, you know, that's acceptable to us, and we'll just, have town just, council review it. If you may. Thank you. All right. What is the language, Mr. Chairman, that you're suggesting for for 17 that, that somehow we come back and ask for you to modify it at some point? We're not changing the language. I don't think we changed the language, but you've got the. As always, you have the option to come back right. if you if you get some additional information, you get a different decision. We've got the, the you've seen the board. The board has discussed it, and the board has stated that they'd be open to trying to make it as painless as possible for you. If if I may. Or you can wait to the next meeting if town council blesses the language then we're f we can proceed with that. If it's I mean, your choice. If I may through the chair, personally, as a board member, I would, condition 17, I think, doesn't even need to be there because I look at it, what's right? And I understand the, the letters and the three other gentlemen that were um, included in Mr. Davies' uh, letter about that. I understand their context and what they were thinking. Uh, I do think that the town council needs to speak with us directly and, and them directly here at the meeting on the 18th, maybe just to get to the point, because I don't think we're very far away from the, anything that, other than the town council, and he needs to have the, they need to have the full 360, their view, our view, and, and then the legal view. Um, I, I don't see the harm in it, uh, having, them, having them participate in the meeting with us on this just to resolve it. Because if they, if, they, if they were here right now, they could say, well, well, this is the one thing, this is another thing, and, and in light of this, this is what I think, and then you'd have that information firsthand. They would have that information firsthand, and we could deal with it firsthand. Right now, it's like we're guessing. Uh, well, I think the key is, I think that if we're looking for a change in the language, there can be some dialogue back and forth if, if mm -hmm. and get a result before the meeting rather than bring everybody and hashing it out. We, we just discussed the issue and, and to put to rest, uh, we'll accept 17 as we okay. okay. Thank you. Um, so the other, you had wanted to review number two reviewed by town council too. Are we not doing that now? That was the uh, adding the language said order of conditions to be enforced by CONCON. Right. You want that reviewed by town council? I, I did not necessarily. I thought that. somebody said they did. Somebody did. Yeah, I don't remember who. Yeah, we comfortable with it. I think I'm comfortable with that change. Okay. So right now nothing is going to town council. Mr. Chairman, did I hear that correctly that you're, you're okay with voting on this without going to town council? Correct. If we uh, what we're going to do is any additional public comment. Okay, put a check mark next to that. Uh, vote on special permit approval and conditions. Do we have a motion? Um, before you do yeah, that, we have to do the um, 
I would just ask that the A not the be and approved okay. first so that we not um, approving something okay. that's not conforming. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again. To approve the A&R plan. The A and R plan so that you're not do that first right. so that you're not approving something that's not conforming. Do we have to can we keep the public hearing open or do we have to do have to continue it for continue it after to do that, that or what we can we? keep it open. Okay, we'll keep it open. You want to just yeah, touch on the A and R plan, so. Um, so the A and R plan removes the interior lot lines from the additional parcels that were purchased. The, the reason they're doing that is so that they don't have to meet the setback requirements required under the bylaw. So it makes it one big lot, basically. And that's how it was presented, correct? Correct. And it meets the standards for an A and R plan, and it is eligible for signature. That we approve the ANR plan for 147 Lumber Street and the other properties that it's including. I have a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? So carry. Oh, okay. <laughs> the vote on the special permit. Uh, somebody want to make a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the special permit with the. Um, the conditions as discussed and agreed to. Second. Okay. Discussion? Yes. <laughs> Discussion? So, as I stated in the beginning or during the middle, that I'm not really in favor of all this clear cutting. <coughs> but, you know, it sounds like um, some attempt has been made to reduce the amount. I would just like to feel more comfortable. If you guys can explain to me the size of the original proposal, how much clear cutting will it be, rough acreage, and just to elaborate a little bit on the environmental impact of it. Sure. Mr. Chairman, if I could address this uh, first by the comment. Um, one of the things I've been asking a while back was look at the carbon detection project. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's roughly 11 acres of uh, clearing, um, but if you were to look at that on a 25-year snapshot using the EPA's data, um, those trees would offset roughly 324, um, 24, 324 tons of carbon versus having the solar installation in place for the same 25 years would offset si roughly 60,000 tons of carbon. So. It's a huge uh, difference in terms of the carbon effect of the solar versus the existing trees, which are really uh, a, a probably a 25 to 30 year old stand of, of uh, less than mature trees. But not to say that, but we're also planting a lot sure. around the edges, and there's going to be a a, 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 so a, 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 a meadow uh, as well in between the panels. So, so just so I'm clear, at the beginning of the project. You were looking at clear cutting 11 acres, but you reduced a lot of the panels. But the clear cutting is still the same we amount. Still, it's it's roughly that we reduced it a little bit, but we had to um, we still had to accommodate the stormwater features. And, okay. But that's what we're doing. So we did we ended up replanting shrubs and and uh, arbor vitae as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any comment? Or are we just making general statements right now? It's up to it. I, Whatever you I want. Okay. So, so I, I just have a couple of things. Um, one, uh, I do agree with Mr. Paul in that I was very concerned initially about the clear cutting aspect to put in um, solar panels. It didn't make a lot of sense to me, frankly. Um, but I do want to say, you know, obviously the neighborhood um, has had a lot of concerns. From my perspective, I feel like you have been very open to what the neighborhood has had to say. I feel like you guys have made a, a real, um, a very nice attempt to hear what they're what they're talking about, especially with the screening. Um, I know there's still some open concerns that were not addressed um, as far as the height of the trees and so forth. They did have concerns about that, but I think in general, um, you've been very receptive to the comments. I think you guys have done a very nice job of coming back to us and um, giving us a lot of what we've been looking for. Um, you know, I'm still very torn on the project, but uh, frankly, uh, feel that you've done a very nice job. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, yeah, I would just say that um, I have been uh, very pleased with the responsiveness and the congeniality and, and uh, 
the interface with us as a board and with the neighbors as well. I appreciate the efforts that have been made uh, to make this project uh, even better for the folks that are surrounding it in particular. I, I would kind of concur with my colleagues' sentiment. I think the efforts that you guys have shown, the good faith efforts, um, I think have gone a long way. I don't think it's perfect, um, but I do think you know, addressing concerns from both CONCOM, uh, BETA's uh, level of comfort with some of the stormwater issues, um, I hope and I, and I think it's going to be okay. Right? So I appreciate what you guys have done. that doesn't mind looking at solar panels. So in the future, if I build my retirement home up there, it won't be an issue. I feel that people have property rights and um, they have the right to do whatever they want with their property as long as it's legal. And this is a legal right, um, as well as a pig farm, uh, a uh, turkey farm. Uh, it could be worse. So. I don't think um, this is a bad project at all. I think he's bent over backwards. I've been coming to all these uh, meetings, and I think there's been um, a lot of good response from both sides, and uh, I, I think this should go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I could just say, but I'm repeating what has been said by other members of the board, is that no one likes to have change in something that could be perceived as, and I'm using a term for artificial and having to look out on it, if you've been looking at trees. But we follow the directions of what was approved under town bylaws and under state law. <coughs> and in this case, you've made uh, every effort that you could make uh, to meet the requirements and to take care of the issues. So I think that's being you know, recognized and um, because of that, you know, we're proceeding in, in I think the direction we're going to proceed. I'm not putting votes at anybody's mouth, but I think we're recognizing that you've made the effort uh, as much as you can reasonably do, which is what we ask for granting approval. Any other comments? Yes. <coughs> Last time we had asked about <coughs> comparisons of trees versus solar panels and the economic benefits and they've included some information in this week's packet that shows overwhelmingly the, the, the amount of uh, goodness that solar panels will, will provide to the world. Um, and uh, you know, they've always been very responsive and uh, the neighbors have also been very uh, responsive, uh, bring, allowing us onto their property and walking with us and examining the situation. And I, I think we've had a very useful dialogue, and I hope that um, that's what we have going forward in the future for, for this project and other projects that come before us. Thank you. So if we can take a vote, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes, yeah, I'll go there. It's not going to hold up the project. And I, I appreciate the hard work, but just in my in my soul, I think it's not. I think it's detrimental to the okay. town. Abstain. Abstain. Okay, we have six votes. So carry. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Do uh, vote on the stormwater management uh, permit. If I can get a uh, motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. Any comments? From the public. Do a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I'll abstain. Abstain. So carried. Can I get a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Good luck. Good Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
No, I wanted to speak to okay. John privately. Oh. Okay. Something too weird. I can just talk to Jennifer. Oh, okay. oh yeah. it's not way too yeah. much. No, not for John. Just but I was going to bring up. Oh. Too late. <laughs> too late. Yeah, that ship has sailed. Yeah. It's so remarkable. It's basically yeah. Yeah. the same technology. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As a Kindle, but you can write on it and put it up in the cloud. Like it's writing on it. Like you know. cool. yeah. I wanted to touch it. <laughs>